Hey, Click This fans, want to get closer to the show than ever? Join Click This TV. Click This TV offers early commercial-free access to wrestling's hottest podcast, plus live audience tapings of their show every friggin' week, and your chance to participate with Kevin and Sean in the monthly Nash and Friends Watch Along Show. Head to clickthistv.com now and get inside the show that's just too sweet. The following podcast contains mature language and adult discussions. Was your feed blurry? I was a little blurry in the intro. I'm okay. I look okay. Yeah, the intro you, was. The you intro look was, okay. The intro. The intro went blurry. Okay. It's Steve's damn internet. Got to get off that uh, that hand crank modem, that 14 14 k modem. Just make sure you just don't try to splice only fans and are open at the same time. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, clear your screen before you start working on this. That fucking dogfuck.com. I told you to get off that shit. Oh, gee, I dogfuck. How many advertisers did I just lose on dogfuck? Jesus Christ. Uh, <clears throat> I'm a little verklempt. <clears throat> I'm recording an audio book this week. I'm done, but it's been a week of that. And the many voices, the many voices in and out of uh, ECW. <clears throat> the many, the many uh, races and nationalities. Also, I got to do a little, uh, a little Scorpio. Got to do a little New Jack. It's always fun. You know, I was having breakfast today, Kev, on the way um, before I got on the ferry to go into Manhattan, downtown Jersey City, in a very trendy financial area. I was, um, I found this little French cafe, Maman, which is rather lovely. And I was having a croak maman, okay? I don't give a fuck. Everyone was sitting, sipping their lattes and their fucking cream teas around me. Look, to Steve, bring up that fucking thing I had. I'm sitting there in my shirt. I look like Tony Soprano. Wandered into the fucking place. I sat down. I was hammering this fucking croak maman. You got to see this thing. It's unbelievable. I didn't... I didn't I, lobbing it onto my fork laying the two layers of cheese as it slid down the utensil. I don't know. Maybe I don't have... Maybe, I, I, it's the thing I sent to you whenever you want to bring that up. But, uh, yeah, I was, I was very so, proud I mean, of myself. So, I mean, since I'm not going to see a visual, what the fuck is it? It's, I, I know it's, it's got a, cheese. Is it, a, it's a, is it an it's, entree? Is it a breakfast gimmick? Well, you know, for me, it's a breakfast, I think. Um, it, it's a... Uh, I'll tell you exactly what's on it. It's a... Um, it's Parisian ham with Comte cheese and bechamel on sourdough. It was lovely. I did have a tea with it so I could see looks someone. Like, see does, someone I, I, all it looks like is like a rich white person's fucking uh, grilled, che grilled cheese. <laughs> it was breakfast. I guess you could call it grilled cheese with ham. Grilled cheese with know. ham. I Parisian what, ham. That bit's a grilled cheese. I, I've never had a grilled cheese with ham. Well, there you go. See? I, I look like uh, like who didn't ran sitting in there eating it while everyone uh, spoke around me with their pinkies out on their way to Goldman Sachs. See, so you're staying on your diet. Yeah, I see. I started. <laughs> I, I went off. I This proved to me that if I was unleashed, had I had success early in life, and I was to my own devices in New York every day doing something artistic. I'd be dead. I'd be dead. I'd be I'd be tempted. What at do every you put on it? Is it like do you put a condom in, or is you it, don't need anything? No, there might maybe there's a thin layer of maybe there's a thin layer. No, that the thing I had yesterday had a thin layer of mustard. I've been hitting the place about three the, the past three days, and each thing more wonderful than the next. See, that's me. When once I if I'm out of my haunt and I've like trip into a place and it's got some good shit it's just like i'll just as soon go back the next four days i'm in 
days I'm in that area. Absolutely. That's your jam now. You and, found yeah, it. Exactly. Yeah. It's like there's no reason to look anywhere else. And, and nine times out of ten, there's no reason to get anything else to eat. So I was in the studio, and I, I had, there was a door next to the booth, and I asked the kid who was running the session, Cody, I said, what's, uh, what's in there? You got, is it other studio space? He said, no, it's, it's more like storage. He said, there's just, they put some, they don't really go in there that much. So I said, he said, you can go in if you want. So you know, fine. Well, let's, you never know what you find in old buildings in New York, right? So I go in, and Kev, look at this. I figured you'd, you're the first person I thought of. I move a thing out of the way. I stick my head in, and in the storage closet is this, uh, and I, I was wondering, is there expensive wine in there? It's one of those uh, refrigerators, which uh, had, I should have taken a goddamn bottle out, but I thought that would have crossed the line, thinking this is where the owners are stashing the Chateau Lafitte or something. That, that's the one expensive wine I know by name. Um, they're stashing some stuff in here. It'll be all, I noticed though it was set to um, 55.5 uh, 55 degrees. So would that make it what, a red? Oh, that's cold. It's too cold for. Uh... I, I think I, I want to think that mine's set at sixty three. Okay, well maybe that's a white because white can be a little colder. Yeah. I don't know, but the 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 bottles don't look like whites. It looks like you know. Right, right. It does, right. It looks like reds, maybe. Should have gone. I don't know. It, 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 it depends on what they are, and depend. I don't know. I, I don't have any like wines from the fifties, so. I'll tell you one thing, my um, my wife, a good friend of hers, Cindy Castle, that um, was Swifty Lazar's um, personal assistant when Swifty was around, and a uh, lit uh, literary genius, Swifty Lazar, then um, she went from uh, Swifty to Walter Matthau. Hmm. And then from Walter Matthau, she's been with Mark Wahlberg for forever. Currently living in Vegas. But when she um, <clears throat> when she was with Walter Matthau, Walter, when he passed, gave Cindy his wine collection. Well, he had. I I I, I, I will swear to you. I I was talking to my wife about this the other day. I said. If you ever told this story, everybody in the room would be calling it such bullshit. We drank, I should say we opened 10 bottles of mid-50th Rothschilds. Which would fetch you how much if you were in? <sighs> no idea. Okay. No idea. But I mean, like, these are like, you know. The Holy Grails, you know, because, mm. yeah, you know, the French. And uh, <clears throat> every one of them, it probably hadn't been turned since they were put there in the 50s. <laughs> and every one of them oh. had, had turned to vinegar. Oh, really? It was unbelievable. Oh, shit. We actually found a Penfolds, like, Lagrange or something like that that was, you know, kind of a current that we were able to salvage as a, you know, but it was like, you know, you're talking like maybe a six hundred dollar bottle of wine as compared to a, let me just see what what a Rothschild like a fifties. What's the most expensive bottle you ever drank from? You didn't have to make the purchase. Maybe it was a a purchase for the table, but I would. You know what? I I'm not that guy. Like my whole when you like the biggest the biggest mark in the world to me is the person that goes in. And pays 19 times li liquor store price for a bottle of wine, you know. But is there a historic bottle that's coveted, that's I was, only I, 10 did, restaurants in the world no, have? but when, um, hold on here. 50s Rothschild price. Were you keeping that a secret from your microphone for a minute? What, what was that? What was that whole gimmick? I didn't want to scream in your ear. I'm going to look at the wine list right now from Del Frisco's. I was at Del Frisco's and I was floored, first of all, by the amount of wine they had, and then some of the prices. I'm like, what? What? What could you taste in that bottle that would justify spending that? Let's look. 
Frisco one. If you were coming here for raw results, folks, you got the wrong show. I'll tell you that. I'm trying to see if it'll give, won't give me the. Uh... <clears throat> well, this is actually. Let's see here. Uh... 50, it's 57 Rothschild. The price they've got on here is uh, 1058 bucks. Okay. That's their that's their their price. Not not I have no idea. I mean it's that's a fifty seven. Right. So. There were there So were at a wines. restaurant that would be ten grand probably. I was gonna say, yeah, th there were wines on this list. I mean I'd I'd love to find an actual one I could quote. But you, uh, usually the highest in you're gonna see pages the, this thing. Yeah, and usually the, the highest you're gonna find it at a at a at a at a place like that's maybe a three or four thousand dollar bottle it's usually in magnum like you know no there were there were there were a few that were close to 20 yeah i'm sure i mean it just and you're talking someplace in the city right yeah del frisco yeah but what the fuck could you taste in that there were some expensive scotches that i was a little curious about but i i, I didn't do it you know what i i my palate's decent but it's it's I guess you know what's it, what's it, like to me like you know you, you get an S class Mercedes. I mean that's just I don't need I don't need to I I, I know I don't fit in anything I don't fit any in anything exotic so I mean that's you know like I've never been like wow I'd love to have a Ferrari be like mm. you know because I'm not gonna fit in it right yeah you know, I'm not gonna fit in any supercar so it's just like. And then you go to from that to Rolls, and every time you, you speak to anybody that's actually owned a Rolls Royce, they're not the most dependable cars in the world. You mm -hmm. got a lot of things that go wrong, and they're super expensive to keep on the road. That's why when you find them for sale, they've got you know nine thousand miles on them, and they're six years old. You know, Interesting, it's like, right? You know, it's like you know you find you know you find most people that drive a Mercedes, I would think, would drive. Five to ten thousand miles a year, like most people. Because not, they, not if they, you drive your family to Florida a couple of times a year, Kev. Yeah, New Jersey. But if if I had if see if I had a Benz, and that was like my primary car, and I was trying to keep you know, mm -hmm. keep it from getting beat up, I'd rather I'd rather rent something to take down to Florida than than put the miles on my. On a hundred thirty-five thousand dollars sedan, then I can get a, a Cadillac uh, XTS or whatever it is, right? Uh, you know, just take you know, take that and drive that. So when it comes down to it, I mean, it's not like the Autobahn. You're not going to get if, if, at our age. If if you wander too far north of eighty, it's not that the stress in your in your brain because you know better. Like just put the fucking thing on, put the cruise on eighty, and just. That's the thing is, I mean, it, in interior amenities, seats, you know, seating, well designed seating, ample cabin space, good um, sound system, good sound system, easy interface, touchscreen. You give me that, I don't. I mean, I've driven, I've, I've had Audis, I've had uh, Mercedes, I've had Nissans, I've had GMCs. I don't see that much difference i don't either I don't, in them no. if i sit in them and i have they have everything i want i don't see a difference in a high-end any brand i really like was was uh so when test drove the, the cadillac made that seat at ct6 for a couple of years and in, when i was on the road i would rent the impala uh chevy yeah, the Chevy Impala, and it was a premium car. But for, I would be by myself renting the car, or maybe Scott would be with me. <clears throat> and the front seat uh, with the six way, I mean, there was plenty of room. I mean, they were the, that was like my favorite car to, that would, I mean, I've actually like looked at purchasing, they only got a 3.6, 
but it's just a it'd be a nice car just to have like i could park it underneath here and just have it as a backup vehicle mm -hmm. you know yeah that, that i can probably pick one up now for probably you know twenty five thousand bucks with hardly any miles on it but they stopped making the fucking thing Oh, they did the Chevy Impala. Yeah, they don't make any. Like nobody makes a sedan. That was a popular police car for a while, a while, wasn't it? Yes. I feel like the Impala, the Chevy Impala, you saw them all yes. over the place, like in the nineties. The Daytona the Beach just got Daytona Beach just got. I think their patrol cars mm -hmm. are uh, Impalas. Hey, you know you're flexing that headset that got some compliments this week. I a couple of people have said it was they, they gave me shit and they told me. Like, number one, anybody that's telling me to go do something audiovisual um, and, and giving me a, like, try the uh, Obernar X9173, like, yeah. Dude, there's a rocket that goes up that I can see on my roof, like, every day. I don't go look at it, <laughs> you know? So you got some suggestions on alternative. Yeah, like, I, 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 you know what? If you can hear me, the problem has always been Nash fades in and out. Right. So if we've taken care, if we have alleviated that issue, uh, I, we're not going at any at any point was it optically. There's no way that this right now is at any way possible better than better than that i'm i'm sorry well put i mean it's just like come on hello to our live audience if you'd like to be a part of this live audience you do that at clickthistv.com it's so easy by subscribing to that you get the show early you get it without commercials you get to be a part of the weekly live audience i don't know another show that does a weekly live audience in the podcast world, no, you can go I, be in Stephen know. Colbert's audience every night. I'm look. I, I, what, do you, what do you think of this look here of the, with the headset? But and also, the, like I, like I'm at a radio station where I've got somebody that could would could come in and, and sit down and you know pull a, a guest. You know, yeah, and it's well, you know what? Maybe go straight down with it until they. Uh, you know what I'll do is I. So I didn't. I you know. Jump out! We, 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 you and I talked about this, and if it was going to come up, and I, it was just something that was going to come up, I didn't want to go into it. But so uh, Monday was was T's birthday. He would have been uh, twenty seven, and uh, I, I came to the realization of there's two points in a relationship with a human being that are, are of significance. I mean, I'm talking, you know, family. And this when you, you know, when they're born and then, and then when, they, when they leave us. So, you know, Tamara and I thought we were, we were doing a good job um, getting through this. But it's man, it's kind of wiffle ball when it's just Christmas or Thanksgiving or you know. The first everything. But first birthday. Oof. Yeah. Is that <laughs> you know that's where it all starts. And you remember, uh, so I was right there. I cut the umbilical cord, so. Pretty real fucking shit. Yeah. Well, you know, certainly no consolation. So, uh, well, hold on now. The reason I said that, because yeah. I know I get emotional, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give, I'll give T the mic over there. Because he didn't have one. He had that fucking shitty one that was like, it looks like he would, this one here he's got over, this is what he's got on his side. This is what he used. It was... Pull this fucker out. He had fucking so tie a yellow ribbon round the old oak tree. It's been three long years. 
Do you still want me? <clears throat> He's oh, old. the whole damn buses. He's old school. He would have appreciated the. Uh... Yeah. He's got, the, he's got the arm now, so. Anyway. Uh, happy birthday well, to you. Yeah. I, I, I did want to say that because, um, I, you know, last week I didn't, I didn't know it was coming up, Kev, and I, yeah. I felt well, bad. Well, that was the reason I was going to go to Michigan. After the fact. I was gonna, no, I was going to go to Michigan because I didn't want to. I thought it would be worse being here. Right. Was it canceled for weather, or, or you just you no? To... Because when it came the night before, uh, Tam and I, you know, like we were sitting downstairs, and I had done a load of wash, and and I had brought my. I, I always come downstairs and watch TV, and I fold my clothes up. We've got a, a massage table in our TV room, and I've got a, a beamer pad on it that I lay on. I've got neck pumps and fucking you name it. I got every from ultrasound, infrasound, electric stem, all stuck on this over this corner where I can you know if I get wake up and I've got knots in my back, I put stem on my fucking traps. And, it looks like Frankenstein's lab. Yeah, it, it really is. It's a, it's a shame I'm so fucking beat to death. But um, but tonight I'll have to uh, put a towel down and take all the shoes that I put underneath it. I kick my shoes up every day because, of course, the cleaning crew's coming. And they've oh, got, yes. They've got, to get, they've got to get under there tomorrow. So, I mean, i got to get home and get to work tonight to make sure that, the, that, that there's you don't no... don't see your shoes. Yeah, there's no obstructive... Uh, Cleaning, somebody has to, God forbid if somebody had to pick something up, but, uh, and our cleaning lady and her, her son are amazing. I'm just teasing if you guys watch this, or if you, thank you so much for cleaning our home, but, and that, you know, they the biggest. They watch it at Austin's. Do they clean his place too? No. No? All right. No. I, it's no. on there. But, um, they, uh. The hardest thing with, is with anybody with cleaning is you got to trust them. You know, the people are in your house. They're going, I mean, they've got access to your shit. Mm hmm. Yeah. yeah. Back, back when I had that long blonde hair, we couldn't keep a cleaning crew because my underwear would be gone. And we had all male crews. It was crazy. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> Good for you. Um, you were doing the, the wash. Uh, the night before the, the yeah, flight, so we're it? doing yeah, we're doing we're doing wash because uh, you know like when it comes down to it, I've got I bet you I've got fifteen or twenty suits and probably ten or fifteen sports jackets, and the thing about me is I won't throw any suit away because I got I I can't buy them off the rack, so I, 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 these things are made to me, so it's just like. Whether it's a 340 me or a, a 290 me, it's still me. And, like, the bones of it, <laughs> you know, fit. You know, I might not be, you know, Dr. Anabolic anymore, but if I can, you know, I've, I've still got a 54, 55-inch chest. And no matter what, I got these coconuts for shoulders. So, I mean, you know, I put some of these, when I was diesel, I put a couple of those jackets on. Uh, the other day, and I was just like, how the fuck did I ever wear this? Mm. Like, my arms and shoulders just it ate it alive. Yeah. I was like, I couldn't, even, I couldn't, my biceps were bigger. And I'm thinking, I look back at pictures of me at Diesel, and I'm, my, my arms are way thinner. So it's like, like, well, that's one thing you can grow to your 64 is I guess your arms will always, can always grow, as long as you keep putting that, that, that constant, uh, I mean, I I still train my. That's like if, it, if I can find something I can train heavy, I'll train. I'll I'll still train that motherfucker. I can get legs about one out of three workouts. I can I can go after it, but then it's just like even the the knee replacement knee hurts. You're like, eh, you know, you, you, is it really like you know? Like I said, you're not going to the Olympia. You're never gonna have great legs, like Uncle, but. <laughs> No, so we were talking. <laughs> we were never going to get. We we're never going to get to this, uh, this situation because we, we keep. I keep sidestepping it. So, 
I just am, I, and we were texting with my sister um, back and forth, and it was just, I just sat down on the footstool across from her, and I just looked at her, I said, I don't, I don't want to do this. Like, I, I'm, I, I don't know how I'm going to be. I said, I'm, I'm already, like, it's, it's already having an effect knowing it's coming. Yeah. I said, I don't. I said, I know, worst case scenario, if I completely implode and I'm in my crib, I'm cool. You know? But if I'm at a baseball game or in an Airbnb in Detroit or in an airport or on a plane or, and there's like, we do, I have Teespin Detroit plenty of times. And there's a lot of memories that we've had up there. So it would, you know, that's why he was, you know, that's why we wanted to go up there because there was a restaurant he loved on Woodward. And we were going to have a, we we're going to have his, his, uh, his birthday dinner at that restaurant. And, uh, you know. It might have worked the other way, though, as far as it just, your it, emotions. What ended up happening was, so then Tamara and I just kind of, you know, it's, it's rough when you hear your wife upstairs crying. And you go up there and then, you know, they, they feel bad. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm all right. You know, just like, so, so it, Monday came and we just kind of just went, you know, went through the day. Yeah. It would have been nice if he would have got indicted on Monday and you know, we at least would have had a diversion, at I'm not, least not something being to a take dick, but just something that where we could have actually had some some debate and some discussion about something that was going on besides just, hey, wow, look at that, Wheel of Fortune. Mm. T's not here. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. Pretty big, pretty big elephant in the corner there. Yeah, so it's just, yeah, so Monday, so, that, so then it gets late in the day, and we're just like, ugh. And our favorite little restaurant is Millie's. It's uh, up the road from right, two miles up the road from right up the beach. And everything's just, I mean, straight from the ocean onto the table. Mm. You know, whatever they catch. They get a big giant grouper. They fucking, they, you'll eat grouper. For, if you go there five days in a row, and they got grouper. They, you got grouper. You know, some, sometimes they'll, you know, they'll come back with a monkfish and, you know, a flounder. It just depends on what's in season, and whatever's in season, you eat. <clears throat> and it just so we went down there and had dinner. And I had looked uh, on Sunday night. I looked at their special, and they had this uh, grilled Mediterranean flounder on top of uh, angel hair with this uh, Mediterranean. Uh, tomato based like sauce all over it mm -hmm. fuck man it looks so delicious so i went there and uh that's you when know, we, we called and um actually i text the owner to make sure that, that we could get in he texted he said yeah i said it's wide open and we got in there and it was like it was like tea maitre d because our, our favorite guy that works there is a guy named robert and he just works Mondays and Tuesdays. And it was Monday, so we got Robert. And he went, he sat me in a booth and then went to where the front bar is and turned the, pulled the TV out on the bracket and turned it so I could see the Miami Denver game. Oh, yeah. And we went, my wife and I, they, they got a, a decent bottle of cab, but it's called McNabb. It's like a forty dollar bottle of wine at this restaurant. And we had a bottle of wine and we just sat there and it was just like like tea basic there was usually it's packed and it kinda has that place to be kind of vibe. People get a little buzzed and there's some in energy in there. You know, it was it was on that uh that show uh, diners and drive ins and Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna have to hit it when I'm down there, Millie. Yeah, it's it's unbelievable. <laughs> so you know, we, we we ended up having a nice dinner. I took a, I took a, a gimmick to go home, a plate a plate to go home, and 
Yeah, you know, it turned out to be it, it, it was the right call though. There was okay, man, good. it was the right call not to go anyplace. And um yeah, and it was it was tough. It was really tough. But see now I haven't I haven't talked to anybody about it and I haven't talked in depth about it. So now like anything else, this is like the, the people don't like people say you're strong and you're this or that. It's like no, because we don't, this, with this one thing, I, and I think this is one of the reasons that this is for T is, no matter what, I have to fucking, you know, I have to deal with these things. And sometimes you don't want to talk about it, then you're like, and when I'm here, there's a huge elephant in the room. Yeah. So. It's 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 like a forced therapy in a way. Yeah. It it uh, it makes it a little more accessible, closer to the surface when you sit there in the room that you and T put together, quite honestly. And and you sat right there sure. at the end of that bar stool and we put the the you know mm-hmm. basically T came up with the thought, you were in the mm-hmm. area, you came down, we sat at the bar stool, so it's, so you know we, had the laptop, went back and forth there, and you showed me how easy it was to get on StreamYard. And you know, so. I never, um, I never sat in his presence. At, uh, I mean, I, I guess I'm as close to him as I could be with this distance. He would call me, you know, yeah. mornings when he was up, and you know, I was I was always happy to talk to him. And funny as hell, <laughs> um, but um, but I guess the the one thing I never I never got to sit with him and. And talk about the the vision for the show, and I did it all with you, you know, through with him through you, I guess I should say, and the things he was telling you and he was showing you on podcasts and stuff. But um, I do regret never getting to uh, to shake his hand. But yeah. um, but it's still, uh, you know, I'm still affected when I when I think of him too. Um, I should tell you that uh. We uh, the feedback from last week. The first thing I wanted to tell you was that uh, love the headset never missed a word once. Love you. Guys. <laughs> was from Steve Austin three thirty. I'm, I'm sorry. What, what, what was that? <laughs> and uh, I, and for one, I I think the the smaller. Ear earphones are fine, by the way. I know you were a little self conscious about that at first, but I think they're fine. No, I, you know, once it's like anything else. If I would have went through all this shit and having this little, you know, I, I guess I made reference to Janet Jackson. It is from the, the Black Cat tour. Damn it! So, so for, from now on, you can you can refer to me to Janet, Miss Jackson, if you're nasty. If you're nasty. <laughs> Oh, you nasty boy. Hit it. Nasty. Please continue. (laughs) David Martinez. Wow, you guys totally reactivated a suppressed memory I had as a young fifth grader. I was totally part of an NWO gang at school. We all wore the shirts and would cause havoc to the other class at recess. Some of us even did run-ins during restroom breaks. See? This that's, is why. That's, that's, this that's what, is why that's school what's, districts. That's what's missing. It's what's missing in the business, or what's missing in schools. Everything. The business isn't. It, the business isn't feeding. The, it, it, it. So here's one for you. Go. Um, oh no, we're we're, we're doing the, the callback thing, so I, I, I don't want to cut you off. All right, well, okay. It's, it, this is as good a time as any. I, <laughs> I can always go back to the next. Uh... Oh no, well, it, it was so funny because I'd heard, um, I was was going through. I think maybe it was Twitter. I saw something. They said that um, that uh, Brom Breaker was was going to be like challenging Seth Rollins on. NXT, right. So last night, my I told my wife, my wife had the controller, and I said, "Babe, I said, you know, hit the guide." Mm-hmm. Well, the last time that we used, actually used the guide was 
it had to be when 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 TNT had their business before the finals mm-hmm. because all the finals were on ABC. So it kicked me to TNT, and um, which is two forty, I think it's two forty five on direct, and then um, down to was NXT. And it was like end of the show. Like, you know, it wasn't like the start of the show or anything. It was end of the show. And I said, oh, I said, go down to NXT. I said, um, Bronson is going gonna, is gonna to be on TV tonight. And she said, Bron- Bronson Ricksteiner? I said, yeah. She goes, oh, that's right. He does pro wrestle. I said, yeah. I said, he's good. I said, I said and so we flip it over. And he is walking to the fucking ring. And I was just like, wow. So, you know, Tamara watched it. And, you know, Tamara was really good friends with his, his mom. Right. Jamie. And she was good friends with Robbie, too. And um, I mean, actually, like, we were, Tamara and I were talking about, like, our, our kids grew up together. And Bronson yeah. was young. Like, there's a picture of T with, like, really long blonde hair sitting in a they they had a sandbox on the side of their house and the kids were all fucking around in the sandbox and uh there's a picture of, uh, specifically of just t and bronson because you know bronson was maybe two then and um so you know we, we watched it and then seth rollins came out and it's funny because, like, I, I think his sh- his shticks like over the top ninety percent of the time, and he came on that show, and it was it, it basically you know Brom had challenged him to come to NXT, and he wanted a shot at uh, at Seth's new uh, world title, and it was almost like mirror mirror on the wall, like you know, like. But the way he's, you know, like Seth came in, he said, what do you think you can say my name three times like Candyman? He didn't say Candyman, but made the reference. You know, say my name three times and I'm just going to miraculously appear. And then, like he, but he's there. See, and, I would think Beetlejuice at first, but you, you right. went with Candyman. Okay. I went with Candyman. Was that the gimmick with Candyman that you said his name and he showed yeah, up? Yeah, and, okay. and that dude showed up. He showed up. I don't. I said it three times. One once when I was a kid, I turned around. It was fucking Sammy Davis Jr. <laughs> I said, "Fuck, I, go, 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 figure." Everything he makes is satisfying and delicious. So don't worry. It makes about you it. know what? It makes the fucking world go round. Absolutely. Damn it. So, uh, and then he just he kind of got when when he you know he got it's almost like a Liberace character that he does. To a degree, with the you know, the, the, I don't know what those glasses are, but those, I, yeah. I, you know, I don't, I don't know what design they are. I'm, I'm sorry, you know, I'm not a fashion. Uh, I, don't, I don't, I don't go. I, I haven't been to, to Fashion Week in Paris since early 2000. But uh, and then he just almost went out of character, and he said, "You know what?" He goes, 10 years ago when I was there," he goes, "That's." I would I would have pulled something like this off, like so. You know what he goes? Thought about it. He says, "Yeah." He says, "You want to do this?" He says, "Yeah." He said, "Yeah." I'm like, kind of, I'll go back to my roots. Yeah, I'll go down there. And and it was just, and I thought to myself, "See, see, all you have to do is, I mean, that belt now means something, right?" And it really will mean something if he travels to NXT with it, because now it's basically it, it's it's a company wide you know it's a company wide belt. You can wrestle for this. So, so now all of a sudden, man, you can you can spice up so many things by having that belt on somebody that's not a part time player. Right. And it was just like I just watched you know kind of. And I just the fact that I caught it, just the fact that I flipped to it and caught it, and I said to myself, like, see? And I will, I will, there was, is no, I mean, I, I DVR uh, NXT anyway, but it's like, I will watch that match before 11 o'clock that night. Like, I, I might have to go back and get it, but 
anytime that they that they get me, mm-hmm. either for either promotion, anytime they get me, I I purposely make sure that I watch that within the time that they can get a ratings bump for it. Right. You know, because it's just like I'm busy, but I I, I, I to kind of you know because what did they do when they did a one three? Well, if everybody's normally like me and gets done with like. I watch Raw before I do this show, but I, then I'll watch Dynamite maybe Friday, you know, after Tamara goes to bed, you know, because there's really nothing on. Right. Now that Mars took a break. Where is that? Was that Atlanta when you lived next to Steiner? He lived up in, uh, well, for the, for when I first met him, we lived... Tamara and I lived on, on, on this man, kind of like in the hood. It was Franklin Road in Marietta. We lived down the street from Coffee's Gym. There was a, a World's Gym up at the other end of the street. There was an old like, country western bar called Miss Kitty's on that on that street. Um, and then they lived in Canton, which is I want to think you go up. We would go out there at. At Delk Road, get on 75, and then go up to 575, and that takes you to Canton. Off of 75, you take 575, and they lived in Canton right there. But it was short. Mm-hmm. If they mean we could be to their house in 15 minutes. Okay. So yeah, then they moved out to the they moved out to the lake. They built a house out out of the lake, uh, Altoona, and Scotty moved down the road from from Robbie. So, right, yeah, yeah, but it was that it was that time when you were in Atlanta. I'm just trying to, yeah, I know you were yeah. in Phoenix too, and yeah. All right, the wait's over. Said I like how while the world is exploding around us with division and bullcrap, and meanwhile there are no arguments or divisiveness or hostility against one another here. When it comes to click this, everyone here is a friend, and we're all a big united community. How refreshing is that? Seriously. People commented that they can't wait to listen. They use it as a positive start to Mondays. They use it for exercise. Everyone enjoys it just the same. Props to Nash and Sean fans. We rock. Thank you. The wait's over. We got a good. We got. I mean, when I go do the signing, so many people come up to me, and it's funny. The people that I have a natural chemistry with, and we'll be talking, and they'll be going. By the way, like this is when this is how they always end it. By the way, love the podcast, keep it going. And they, but so there, are, it's like, it, it's almost like they would, they won't tell you. Like they, they talk to you, and you, you, you get a rapport with them, and you have a conversation, and then they, I think they realize like, okay, this is the same, this is the same guy that I that they listen that that I listen to on Monday. Yeah, yeah, this is the same guy. He's just the only difference is he's in front of me and he's live, and I think that's one of the reasons I still. I mean, this vehicle keeps me. It, it keeps you relevant. Yeah, because you're still and on a different level too. Yeah, yeah. No one would know how well you sing Harry Chapin's Taxi if we didn't have this podcast. No, and I. I mean, I butchered and, and pushed through that. There's going to be one of these one of these live nights. Right. I mean, this is where where Tristan would have been. I mean, Tristan could have came next to me with the with the guitar. Like accompany you. Oh, yeah. fucking! We 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 could have sang into that microphone. See, T. Fuck. It's gonna happen though. It's gonna happen. You could do it a cappella. I know you can. Yeah, I'll do it. Yeah. Um. <sighs> Mr. Newman said, finally took a blue chew thanks to this podcast. Let's just say they are highly effective. <laughs> <clears throat> well done, Mr. Newman. Haven't seen a periscope like that since Ice Station Zebra. Hey, nah. um, you know, uh, Nash and Friends is coming once again. Episode two with Vince Russo. That's going to be Thursday, the 29th of June. I'm super looking forward to this. Dude, he is too. I got to tell you. You know know what it is? Is Vince and I haven't spoken in so long. Yep. This is going to be good. And we, like, even when we were at TNA, it was was like, 
we've we've always been friends, especially when he was just like just writing the magazine, like because Sean and I would always give him a hard time, but like like I always like I remember when when he and I went to the uh, Basketball Hall of Fame together, you know, like that like, that's a really fond memory, and like, he was one of those guys that when you had to do something like Rich Lisk worked in the office and and, and it was so great when. Rich and I uh, were sitting at the John Stewart show and it was on MTV. Mm-hmm. And R- Rich, like Rich, took me to the MTV Rock and Jocks, and I mean we 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 went to uh, Napty a couple times and got to see. We got to go to the House of Blues and uh, VH1 put on a uh, a solo concert with Al Green, mm. and and in New Orleans. I mean, it was just like. Uh, I was just, I mean, the things that we did together, but, but we were on a show on the John Stewart show and the, the, the first guest was many driver. Mm-hmm. And then I think I came out and then the musical guest was Biggie Smalls. Wow. So we're sitting in this, you know, little studio in New York and in walks Biggie with his entourage and like overflows his locker his his dressing room and like there's a knock on the door dude sticks his head and he goes hey man like you got a price i said fuck no man like that but no problem these guys are burning blunts i'm i'm hitting i'm hitting the blunts we have a strict no weed policy but i'm like i'm sorry but biggie Biggie was here yeah come on (laughs) biggie claws and this is—he was just taking off, but he was like, you knew, you know, you knew. Like it wasn't like because this was early. If it was the John yeah, Stewart show, yeah. we're talking ninety-five, maybe ninety-six. Ninety-five. Ninety-five, right? Yeah. yeah. I directed my first national television commercial, and we used the editor for that show. When they were done shooting, we would go upstairs, and he would put our stuff on the deck and cut our commercials so it was definitely 95 um well how was his wheat was it it was it uh, much better than the average uh i had blunt? i wasn't smoking at the time so when he whenever i i i've seen that t- uh, copy of that john stewart tape before and i am fucking i mean i'm i come out man i'm like <laughs> i mean I got to say this because um, I just I just did, did hand movements. Did you ever see when when Bill Maher is is talking about fucking Donald Trump dancing? And he says it doesn't. He says it doesn't matter how many times or where where it's at. It's a like, it's not the same clip. He says every time Donald Trump dances, it looks like he's jerking off two guys at the same time. <laughs> Does kind of have that deal, doesn't it? The skiing yeah, thing, yeah. Yeah, he just like he just, <laughs> you know, it's almost like that's once he gets put away, he'll be doing shit. Um, but but anyway, so it's so a Russo Donald, somehow. Don, this is somehow Donald, related to Donald Russo. Trump. Donald Trump will be put in, in, in some kind of fucking uh, custody when Bitcoin hits a million. <laughs> That's that's my no, that's my Notre Dame prediction. Come on, this is a fucking witch hunt. Witch hunt. We what happened here? I think some. I think uh, there you go. Ah, little... he's not doing it though. He's oh, gotta, he gotta... well, for anyone just listening, we just got a, a still of Donald. I, I thought he's, I, I thought I had a fucking stroke there for a minute. The fucking shit went black on me. Jesus, how about a fucking, how about a, how thought, about you were back, thought you were back in, uh, <laughs> give me, give me, the, hey, hold, you could hold. really animate that because oh. every still he's perfectly positioned to hold a to couple, be putting of a couple in his mouth and, it, and they're, they're aiming right for his mouth. Um, how is this related to Russo, by the way? Cause we were on Russo yeah. and then we got to Biggie's blunts. I, I guess, but okay. We will have to, uh, did you go to the show with Russo? John Stewart? Did he book? Oh no! I, this is this is this this was this this how we subwayed into it, or segwayed. Uh, got no, this was a subway. This was yeah, underground. Yeah, exactly. 
I'm um, segwayed. Um, so I was talking about when you worked with WWE personnel that weren't wrestling related, you know, that weren't like, you know, bookers or whatever. And I, and I put over the fact that Rich Lisk was one. That's how we got with Biggie. But yeah. Russo, I said, how much fun I had when we went to the Hall of Fame and shot that for the magazine. So that's, but Russo and I have never gotten a chance because like when I was, whatever you want, and, and, and we can have this discussion because I might have been head booker at the time, but he'll he'll be able to go into depth of of my uh, of what I had what I was working with in in WCW. You're talking about, yeah, because they brought Vince and um, now I can't fucking. I'm, I can't fucking, I can't think, I'm, I'm absolutely blind on his name. What was Russo's writing partner? Ed Ferrara. Yeah. Fuck. They brought um, Vince and Ed in at the same time. Yes. And they and they basically, I think they sat through one, we were kind of in the, to writing a, a, a TV, and I think they sat through the process one time to just kind of watch how we were doing it. Mm -hmm. And then they, they, and, but they, they, they were throwing, it wasn't like we were, like they were just silent. They were like starting to, to put the show together and making their changes and, and, and starting their direction. But they also wanted to see, you know, this was a completely different animal than that, that they were working on. Mm -hmm. And some of those parts would still be movable, you know, with us, you know, it's gone. Yeah. So, but I think I think they kept Sullivan around. I think they. I, I don't know. I think they kept. I think they kept Sullivan. It was a very fluid time because uh, there was the committee, which was I think after Russo and Ed left. Right, that was when it was Sullivan and Dungeon of Doom, all, all that stuff. Well, we're going to get into it. Point is, we're going to get into it. And if you yeah, would like and, to join and, us. And, I, and, and the thing was, too, the thing you sent me that I listened to from k mm -hmm. commentaries, like I didn't. So, I mean, I, I really want to, we, we'll get a chance to talk to him before we go live, right? Sure. Yeah. I'd like yeah, to, well, I mean, in, we, we could I'm be here. here. Yeah. We could just do it here. Yeah. But I just like to ask him a couple of things. I don't want, I don't want to push this. Any direction that he is, doesn't feel comfortable with, but I do have that. But are, there are some other people that are involved in the story that I wasn't aware of that that, that that I found kind of fascinating. Bro, you can ask me anything you want. Okay, I'm a freaking open book. That's what he's going to say. Do it right now, and he'll give you that when we're with him. Pretty if good. You, if you want to be with us. For this Nash and Friends, I'm still not so. buying the Tiny Tim thing, though. I'm, I'm definitely calling him out. Oh, on that. for anyone that doesn't remember, on our show, we asked him for a guilty pleasure, and he's got like 50 million vinyl Vinyls. records. Yeah, and he did say he enjoys a little Tiny Tim, one of his one of his records. He had some. In, he had some a, a few. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but you, you just you, you stopped him dead. You went, come on. Yeah, you yeah, have an hour. Stop. A free time. You're putting and on you're tiny putting on, you're time. putting on the tiny Tim vinyl. Yeah. yeah. I'm thinking, whew, I wouldn't do that. I'm, I mean, maybe I'm mushrooms, but. Yeah. Thursday, the 29th, that is, let's see if you're listening to this Monday on our drop day. Um, it is uh, a week from Thursday, the 29th, 8 Eastern. Sign up now at clickthistv.com. Yes, Josh, you'll be there. <coughs> and uh, everyone else, please join us. Uh, you'll get to talk to Vince. You'll get to talk to Kev. The best thing about this one, I'm most excited about this because, number one, you guys haven't talked in a long time, and you were yeah. very close in more than one federation. And number two, we've decided that this is going to be a discussion session. We're not going to do a full match. We're going to do. We're going to talk and um, t talk about two guys with verbal diarrhea. Um, I'm going to be between both of them. So this is going to fill the well, 60, I mean, 90 minutes in no time. Double J, Jeff Jarrett, here to tell you a little bit about the nonstop savings happening over here at SaveWithConrad.com. Are high credit card balances holding you down on the card? If you're looking to give a guitar shot to your credit card debt or 
Give your home the push it deserves with some upgrades and remodeling. You need to go to SaveWithConrad.com. That's right, SaveWithConrad.com. Conrad and his team are routinely helping my world listeners save five, six, seven, even eight hundred dollars a month. Oh, did I mention you get to skip your next two house payments? Take a cue from the last outlaw, because if anybody knows how to get the bag, it's me. Strut on over to SaveWithConrad.com today and see how much money you can save for free. That's right, it's SaveWithConrad.com. And MLS number 65084, Equal Housing Lenders. Woo! The one thing that he he and I agree, always have agreed on is, fuck, if it's not a pay-per-view and it's a TV match, like I, I was watching Raw last night, and it's just like, if it's just a, if it's just a, ta- like the, the, they had a tag, ma- they had a tag match at the end of the night, and um, it's the, and I feel bad because, but I always, I always think of this guy as, as the, is the Kurt Angle ripoff, you know, like that, that's, that's in my mind he just plays like the, 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 the Kurt Angle ripoff. And uh, so it was Gable and his partner, and then they they so they they they, they you know they show this, and then they show the close up of this girl, and she's she's like you know, she's made up, but like it's not it's not like Game of Thrones kind of a feeling. This is kind of like. I'm watching WCW in '90, feeling, you know, like yes. I'm like, Ugh. and then I, the next thing you know, out comes these two guys that look like they're barbarians with these giant shields, and I'm like, so you you got in the ring a fucking a guy in a singlet that's a shooter, and he's got like a big heavy dude that looks like that they they you know. They look like they work together. That's, you know, like I get it. Like he's he, that. That's those are those guys would be wrestlers. Yes. You know that's what they look like. I get it. And then the other, on the other side comes, you know, from the, yeah the sci-fi network. You know, because everybody knows that that yeah you know, the uh, it was a lot of fucking. Uh, English used back then for you, so you could have whatever something die on your t shirt. You know, right. Like, true till death. True till death. Yes. No, um, there's nothing true about that photograph. <laughs> the ink. The ink. And uh, you know what? I, I bet you they're fucking. I guarantee you they're like two of the nicest fucking guys Absolutely. On, on the fucking planet. Absolutely. And I, I watched the match. It's just that I don't. I don't see how they get to, <laughs> like. <sighs> well, you know what? I was talking about Russo. You should bring this shit up. He, I mean, he's he's up on the contemporary product. He does like live recaps. Oh, I will. No, I right no, after. I, so I will. Like, good I, to get his take. I will. So that's the 29th. You know what else is coming up? We have a birthday coming up, you and I. What do you What do you want for you? Click this birthday. I think we got. I think we push it back. I think we do a hundred. Celebrate at a at a milestone like a hundred yeah. episodes, right? What the fuck's going on here? I'm guessing your foot hit something. Yeah. Yeah, I think people do. I've seen people celebrate like a hundred episodes on a podcast. There's no reason why we can't make have a little something. We're young. I mean, we're we're, we're talking about wow. Can you believe it's been a year already? But look at the other fucking shows on there. We got four hundred, five hundred shows on this network. Some of these. Why well, no? Some of these podcasts. It's like that old joke. What do you talk to your wife about after forty years of marriage? What do you want to do today? Kill you. There you go. You got it. I'm trying, but I think it switched the. Hold on here. Ah, the intensity, yes. Yeah. Bring it down a there little. we go. Yes. But, uh, 
You know, something you and I talked about this week that I my I, my audio would have been all over the place. Oh that. god, if you had to leave the <laughs> if you had to pull away from the oh, the, fuck. the the black that dong. Would, that, yeah, that so would have black that dong. <laughs> I I lost another advertiser. Who's gone? Who's who's gone? Black dong. Um, something that you talked to me about that I was of great uh, that was of great interest to me, just because it's stuff that I don't get to hear, and I love secrets. I guess that's why I liked wrestling as a kid, right? I wasn't supposed to know it was fake and all that stuff. Um, oh, I said the F word. Um, I was talking to you about the declassification of stuff because we right. had uh, a, a former president arrested for a second time this week. Um, and uh, you began to talk to me about your site in Germany. Right. Now, you were... Uh, for anyone that doesn't remember uh, previous episodes, you were um, in charge. I'm going to use layman's terms, and then you'll plug in all the military stuff. You were in charge of guarding a secret location, which had nuclear no. The, 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 nuclear... the, the, the location wasn't secret. Well, it would have been secret to me as a layperson walking by. I didn't no. know they were. Nuclear... Well, you wouldn't have been. You wouldn't have been able to get on onto the. Uh... But you have to okay. So, the NATO site itself, okay, it's fenced and you know, I mean, it's it's very heavily protected. Yeah, of course. But it's in the back of the depot in Gießen, which is where American Armed Forces brings every fucking thing for the PXs for the entire country. So everything goes into into Gießen, and it's shipped from there to the, you know, to Stuttgart, to Ramstein Air Base, to wherever these these things have to go. So there's a a, a bunch of, of German nationals that work, and and had, you know, access to the Gießen uh, post. Now I just so, want to say to keep you safe, this has been. Like decommissioned, and we're not giving yeah, away yeah, current no, no, secrets. No, no, no. This, this, but, this doesn't exist anymore. Right. Okay. Good. Like, the, I, I don't think that even Geeson as a as a base exists. We could check. So, anyone from but, Washington listening, that we're not. No, I, I know it's not because away. this. We're not throwing just, donuts at okay, each so, other or anything. So, doing anything so terrible I, like that. I, I just was curious because when I was there, when I was at NATO Site Four. And I was debriefed. We were told to say, you know, what did what was your uh, occupation? I provided physical security for items vital to national security. That was that was it. That was my that was what I was told during my debriefing from being having top top secret clearance, hmm. and. And that's all I did. And I'd never really changed that up until I found out that it was no longer there, that NATO, NATO Site 4 was, was gone. <clears throat> so I was trying to find out, like, you know, when did they, when it, they, they had some, some nuclear weapons there. Mm -hmm. And this was from a Major General William F. Burns, and he's it's, it's like a an ongoing thing that I, I was i was reading it was about you know the different nato sites and some of the other things and he says uh he's saying I, this of your site specifically yes he says he says i had the added responsibility for nato nuclear site four in Gießen, germany at which were stored several hundred nuclear weapons from a variety of units. So not one, but several hundred <laughs> nuclear weapons. Okay? And that's that was my that was my gig for three years. Did you and, have to uh, suit up ever and get into some like if you had to go, no, not only if they, if they, they went to the A&E building where they had to actually work on something and they opened it up, they had to open something, like open one of the, you know, 
and you would have to you would have to do two men inside, two men outside. So you were with your you know weapons because these guys could you know yeah they're they're, they're fucking around with a with a, a a nuclear weapon so they you know. But I'm saying, were you ever in danger of like any kind of radiation? Leak no, we or, had or? we had those little those little meters that you. Yeah. Oh, that would tell you if levels were. I'm, I'm were sure raised. they were just fucking pieces of plastic. <laughs> you just made you feel good to him. Yeah, Here, put well, it was this, the uh, A and E building. They're 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 busy producing WWE biography. Yeah. Um. So. So again, finish this quote from the major general here. Oh no, he's just saying how. So it, he said that it was that that what ends up happening was, you know, Reagan, you know, went on and said, you know, the the, the famous tear tear down this wall and as that process happened and the cold war ended the uh the chance to have a, a russian uh a soviet uh, attack from the north into uh into western europe was especially western germany was was nil right so you know, as, as part of it, it was, and I forget what the exact, uh, uh, you know, salt agreement or whatever it was, but you know, there was an agreement, and that agreement was that, that both sides would limit the amount of what they called movable nuclear weapons, and they were weapons like we had the Lance uh, missile. They were and movable in what way? That they put were them, small put them enough on, you, to be you, carted? You put, no, you, no, you put them on a half track. So they were on like a, a like a almost like the the bottom of a tank. So you'd have like you'd be driving a tank, except in the back of it would be a twenty. Like there wouldn't be a. It would be a, a flat bed with a you know with a system that would come up, and that's where that missile sat on all that that you know and then. It, you could you could fire you would you know fire the weapon from but out what the, about out the moving it someplace. what about moving it not for combat but like to, when when it was decla I said declassified decommissioned and they had to get it out of it what what do you like paint it like a Winnebago and just no, drive you, it down you, the street you, so you, no you, one knows you, what it is no you, you 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 put it in the you know there's trailers that they go in that are covered. Mm. And you do convoy, you do security for that. You take them to the Air Force Base. You put them in a C-5, C-130, whatever you're going to do. And then you take them to wherever they're going to be redeployed. Jesus Christ. And then you, that plane ever went down, and the impact, and it had a nuclear it, device it wouldn't, it. It, wouldn't set, it wouldn't set them off. It wouldn't. Mm. Okay. Mm. And you know why, and you're not going to tell us. It has, it has, it, why wouldn't the impact... Fracture the shell. That's it's the same reason that a uh, a, nu a nuclear plant doesn't explode. It just emits radiation. Right. So that's you would have a radiation a situation because of the gotcha. Whatever so, the plutonium or whatever uranium, whatever they used as a. When was your site closed for? I want to think it was 87, 88-ish. Um, so it was right when Germany was opening up, literally. Like that was. Yeah, the... I, I, think that's, I think that's when it was. I, I, I didn't look. I just was, I, I got to the point where the, guys, the guy basically said, you know, I mean, I've said, yeah, we had some nukes and shit out there. I've said that. You know, I've, I've never said fucking a couple of hundred. Did you know? I, Huh? Fuck yeah, I knew. I walked through that bitch. Okay. I mean, you, it's it, it it's like hmm. it's like being a bartender, and you, you know, you you're, you've got your uh, your Jack Daniels, and you you got you know you got three bottles in the back, and you're going through doing the, your inventory, and you do the you know quarter, you know eyeball quarter, you know so it's like you know a half half a bottle of Jack and three three backs. You know you're going through all your bartending shit. You know, it's kind of like those, like you, you walk into one of those igloos and it looks like the fucking, uh, 
when they find all those eggs in an alien? Yes. Yeah. It looks like that, except they're 155 nuclear outer rounds. Do, um, d- if anyone were to attempt to breach that, like how many, how much personnel did you have on site? Oh, like just a squad. Well, well, like, what does that mean to me? A squad? Uh, a squad in football is 11. Um, we had a platoon, four squads. Um, I don't know, maybe thirty-five, and that would have been a that would have been enough. Well, the minute the minute first off, like you would have to get there, so you would have to. I mean, it's not like Russians. The Russians would have had the the ability to to. to to, to drop tiptoe across to drop to drop para, like paratroopers yeah step over your <laughs> come painting. on it's like czechoslovakia we're in and we're out <laughs> that's what it's that like painting it's, is it's a map to fucking site four it's that's it's, it's, that's the that's the actual map that fucking uh corporal winger had <laughs> as he was getting the getting the girls out of uh on Stripe, getting, on them stripes. Back to, getting them back to Germany or wherever they were stationed. P.J. Schultz. How long were you in charge at that? Uh, at I wasn't that... in charge. I was just. Well, I was in just... charge of guard. Well, I mean, you were one of the people guarding it. I, mean, I tell you this. I was so good. I'm not going to blow myself, but I will. <clears throat> um, so they had Casper Weinberger was the Secretary of Defense. And he came out to NATO Site 4, and he wanted one person to take him through the entire facility and give him a tour. And I was chosen to give Secretary of Defense Weisberger. Wow. Weinsberger, his his and I Casper getting, Weinberger, you went from that yes. to Vinny Vegas. I just want to point and out. And I went and I got a, a, I got an accommodation. I got all kind of shit because I knew my stuff. I knew everything. I knew everything about that place. Very good. Because that's what you do. You get in the army. You <clears> figure <throat> you figure out day three. That if your if your fucking shoes are spotless, your bed's made, and you just keep your keep your mouth shut and say yes, sergeant, no, sergeant. Unless you get bored, you just feel like talking, so you can do some push-ups. But it doesn't take long in life to figure out. Okay, this is the minimum. This is anything anything above this now is going to pay me dividends. Right. You know. Like this is the minimum I can get by with. Yeah, I was you working. At, mm-hmm. You were waking, working for how long? No, I was going to say if I was working for McDonald's, I don't know. If I, I, you know, I, I think that the uh, the top of the the, the the top of that that food chain. I mean, you have to be. I guess the manager would be the. Uh, I don't think Casper Weinberger would have walked in, but maybe Solomon Weinberger <laughs> upstairs at the. It might have accounting firm. Um, you so know you what? say. So, 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 I love how you say it. Like from upstairs, like there's only in in New York do people walk downstairs to McDonald's. To Everywhere McDonald's, else they, they walk in. It's a it's a, it's just freestanding. It's the, it's bottom it's floor a, of a tower. I'm, no. I was in one earlier today. <laughs> I know. I, I, it's just it's fun. I saw a thing today on. Um, it was on Instagram or I forget what it was, but they they were talking, and I had noticed this. Um, I mean, 10, 15 years ago, like when you used to, like 20 years ago, when you used to land in Toronto, mm-hmm. there was fucking nothing. I mean, for 20 minutes from that airport, there was nothing. And you would drive towards Toronto. And, you know, now that that area around, around the Toronto airport itself has skyscrapers. So, but you would, as, as the, uh, and the urban development took off, you would see that along the tracks, <clears throat> along the train tracks would be these, these high rises. 
and there'd be like two or three buildings that were the identical architecture. And on the bottom of it would be retail. And then like, you know, above that would be office buildings and above that would be living. And all of them have, you know, very minuscule uh, parking. Like there's just mm -hmm. not, you know, it's not like there's four levels of a parking garage, then there's this. It's just, you know, it's kind of what it is. Some had the, you know, early early ones had the, but now they don't. I don't think they put the parking. And what it is is this, I forget what the term the guy used was, which would probably make it sound much more uh, intelligent. But it's this certain kind of living, and basically what they do is they, make it pretty much impossible for you to live outside of 50 kilometers from you know your your crib like you you like basically vertical convenience right everything yeah is and it's right just there. you know it's it, and they it's because a lot of these places have gyms now i mean oh yeah but it was and i th i thought about it and it was just like one of the things i always loved about being in manhattan was if you could find a, a, a block that had a really good breakfast diner, a gym, a grocery store, a, and, and, and a kind of a boutique little hotel with a decent little bar, maybe pick up a dinner there, like that, that was it. Like you just, like you could live like there for a week. Yeah, get that your work. Was, that was your block. Yeah. That was your world. That was exactly, and yeah. and and I mean, I've always and T always liked that about New York, like this would like you know, to find an area and be like this would be a perfect place, just this block right here. You know, you got everything you you, you basically need. So, yeah, the smell of piss in the summer might get in your way a little bit, but you know, you, you deal eh. with what you can. Depends where you are. You know what you do. You fucking you, you you take a a cheap flight down to New Orleans. You walk Bourbon Street and you go back and it's fucking lilacs. Yeah. <laughs> well done. Hey, listen, how close are we to selling out in Chicago? We've been talking about this AEW. I uh, I swear I, I saw eight hundred last night. Eight hundred tickets left 800, at yeah, uh, United yeah, Center, and, and they're all. They're, they're all in the area that the next thing behind them says standing room only. So right up there, if you're looking at the, uh, if you're watching us, we have a, a diagram of the arena up from one of the uh, ticket sites, Ticketmaster, and it shows. And now it's left. down to that. Yeah, there's some individual seats like sprinkled throughout, but how much of those are resales though, right? Uh, maybe not on Ticketmaster, but you yeah, know what we can do. Let's bring up our friends Game Time, see how much we could get some of those seats there for let's see as little as uh well, i saw 74 there okay so we can do double digits here i'm looking at mezzanine level seats at game time a wonderful sponsor we talked ours. about before we um before we went in steve and we all kind of decided on was that 107 we decided on we're all sitting in 107 where is that? Uh, yeah, there it, it one, is. Yeah, one hundred and seven. Yeah, and it's it, yeah. There's a little bit of a rake. You're a, not yeah. on the floor. Eighty-seven bucks a seat. Probably looks like maybe three seats in, so not too, not too much of you know. You're not too much of a dick to send the guy next to you pissing piss in the opposite direction. Nah, I go that way. <laughs> now that's a bargain because there's yeah. some, there's some upper deck seats which are like ninety one. So that's a one hundred and seven is good. Anyone watching live in our audience here? I hope you have your, uh, hope you have your game time apps open. You know, if you're in the Chicago area on Saturday, you can. Now, this of, co of course, this event will be over, um, I believe, right by the time we yes. uh, by the time we air. So we are we are looking uh, shortly before you are listening live on Monday. Um, not live, actually. Live. I love live on tape. This was taped live before a studio audience. Taped live, oxymoron, jumbo shrimp. Right? Well, that's what uh, SmackDown used to be live to tape. Right. So that was, that you didn't. They did that so that you didn't fuck up. You, you know, you would keep going. And if you want to keep going, guys, Blue Chew. Blue Boom. Chew is the way to keep going. What is Blue Chew? You know what the hell it is. We've been talking about it for months. We love it. They love us. 
They're satisfied with the job we do for them. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, Levitra, but in chewable tablets and at a fraction of the cost. This is all about confidence in the bedroom. You want to be ready to deliver when called upon. Blue Chew is the service for you. Okay, take them anytime, day, night, just so you can plan ahead, right? You pop one, you chew it. They have mint flavor. If you're looking at the screen there, there's the uh, white packet is the mint. The process to get these to for a boost of confidence in the bedroom, a rock-hard, raging, stiff one when you need it. It's so simple. Just sign up at bluechew.com. Consult with one of their licensed medical providers. Trust me, anonymity and confidentiality is guaranteed. Once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. This is done online. You're not going to the doctor's office and sitting in there having those weird conversations. You're not waiting in line at the pharmacy having to face the woman at the register. This is all done online, and it is shipped directly to your door in discreet packaging, like I said. Okay? Um, they want to help you have better sex, okay? So discover your options at bluechew.com. Just chew it and do it, baby. And, uh, of course, we have a special deal for you. Try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code NASH at checkout. Just pay $5 for shipping, all right? What do you have to lose? Get on the bandwagon here. BlueChew.com promo code NASH. First month free. You can't beat that. Visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety information. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring this week's Stiff One of the week. This is one of my favorite clips, and I've I, I've not shared it with many people, but it is a lot of fun. There was an actual altercation in a convenience store, and somebody had the brilliant idea to take the video of the fight and set it to Gorilla Monsoon and Bobby Heenan's commentary from a real pay-per-view. So uh, turn up the volume, Steve, and, and uh, let's take a look. Let's take a look at this. Those of you listening, you must watch this for this week's st stiff one. It's always enjoyable. It's two against one. They're taking him out one way or the other. This is it for Hulk Hogan. This is it. This is crazy. If they can't help him, he don't have a friend left. Wait a minute. Oh, it's the Warriors music. It's the ultimate warrior. It is. Look at that. The ultimate warrior. What is he doing? Is he going to attack Hogan? What is going on here? Close line. And so, that's the ultimate warrior. So those of you listening, we had one guy being double teamed by security and then a run in on the Warriors music. He was tremendous with the shirt open, big beard, a little, a little, a little bit Dutch Mantel, a little bit Moondog Spot, Larry Latham, by the way, could be cast to play. I liked it. Um, dear sexy. I fell, I fell down the rabbit hole the other day. I got on YouTube and it was nighttime and started watching these fucking motorists argue their constitutional rights with the police officers oh are these the uh, ones that 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 say they're they're what is the, the term something citizen uh uh they're they, it, basically they feel that they're sovereign citizens that they're not bound to the laws of the state but th but these people are just not, like a lot of them are 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 black people that are being like absolutely like this one dude gets up this promo he goes dude he goes I got Mississippi tags on he said he, he was down the road he was working on like where they were <clears throat> um, doing some road work and he was you know in from from like a union it was a union job and he was in. <clears throat> you know, was brought in to do this. And he says, "Dude, the minute I, I I was pulling out of that that uh, what is it, what are those places called up there? Oh, fuck, is it Skeets? Was it a, a food joint? No, nah, it's Domino. What is it? Yeah, Sheets. 
Sheets is up in, in uh, there's there's a couple up where, where my buddy uh It's a like, gas state, a gas place, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. So uh he says, Man I man, man I pulled in the sheets and when I made eye contact with you, he said, I saw you on on your uh walkie talkies I I knew. And they were telling they were telling this guy that he like without even stopping just went out and it was like a three lane highway that he would have went out on there ain't no fucking way anybody would it would have just rolled out onto that i mean it just and so he just goes and they want they were trying to get the dog and i mean they just and he said looking for anything yeah and he's like guy. he says yeah. what do you get he says am i be, being arrested he goes he, like no he says then write me a ticket so i can be on my way he says, sir, we need to get you out here. He says, I'm not getting out of the car. He says, there's five of you out here. I don't feel safe. He goes, call it, call you. You got a supervisor? Finally, a sergeant shows up. Meantime, canine's there. And they, they're walking the dog around the car. And he said, and one guy says, yeah, the canine just alerted. You go, oh, yeah, the canine just alerted. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that good one. He said, good one. He said, I don't hear nothing. And it was just... And it just went on, and this guy knew, he knew every, I mean, you know. And then, you know, they always go into this, and they'll say, in this case, you know, so-and-so versus so-and-so in the state of Ohio. This, you know, they, they give all the presidents of all the different, uh, presidents of all the different. Sometimes I just, you I, get someone who's smart that can do that, but a lot of times they're fucking morons. YouTube no, I, I lawyers. But I, who, you know, I, I couldn't, I wouldn't watch that. That's, it's, it, that's, there's, I don't see why it, I couldn't watch that for 30 seconds. I want, right. I want somebody that's fucking smart. That's, that is, is just, I want somebody that's doing the, uh, the, the, the Gavin Newsom. The, someone who's got the facts. <laughs> yes. Someone with the facts. Um, th there were a couple of lawyers who had a, a funny, uh, funny little thing where they gave um, advice, and uh, I'll put a link in the uh, in the thing here that about um, like if they if they talk to you if you're asked questions like what you have to write what you don't what you have to answer what you don't have to answer, and um, again these are these are these are lawyers okay so these are guys with the facts and. Um, yeah, let me just give this so this we can get this up here. It's called they were doing a thing called uh shut the fuck up Friday, if I may use a um a vulgar term here and not risk uh the future of the goddamn podcast and the world at large. So there are a couple of lawyers that were doing this thing, shut the fuck up Friday, um, talking about defending people who were in a a dispensary or a smoke shop um when raided. And um here, let me see if, uh, Steve, I gave you the clip here. It's very short, but it's worth watching. But this kind of goes along with what you're saying, Kevin. Uh, somebody who somebody knows what they're talking about, who, who have the facts, um, that can prepare you for uh, maybe a time when somebody accosts you and maybe doesn't have all the facts, or you at least want to have an intelligent defense for yourself. And uh, here, here's the two lawyers on Shut the Fuck Up Friday, by the way. <laughs> Mark and Craig, Pop Brothers at Law. We've been warning people, if you are working for an unlicensed dispensary, an illegal dispensary, and it gets raided, you need to shut the fuck up. If you shut the fuck up, you have a good, good chance that we can make the case go away. Case in point, three employees of an illegal shop were busted during a raid. Two of them said, oh, I'm just volunteering here. The third guy, shut the fuck up. And the DA did not prosecute the guy who shut the fuck up. They can't prove what you were doing there. If you're a customer, a patient, walked in to go to the bathroom, <clears throat> they don't know. You got to shut the fuck up, and it's shut the fuck up Friday. So review the script. What do you say when the cop first pulls you over? Why'd you pull me over? And when he keeps asking questions? I'm not discussing my day. And they ask more questions? Am I being detained or am I free to go? And if detained, what do you say? I invoke the fifth. And then what do you do? You shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up Friday. Never answer questions when the cops ask. Have safe holidays. Tip of the day. Have a safe holiday. Maybe we should do shut the fuck up Friday. People would like us to shut the fuck up sometimes on Mondays. Uh, I mean, it's... I don't know. Would you have either of them defend you, Kevin? 
No. The two attorneys we just... No. All right, dear sexy, two letters, actual letters to dear Abby. What if... I, would, I wouldn't go out and do fucking shots with those guys. <laughs> yeah, you would. <laughs> yeah, I would. Um, dear sexy, two actual letters to dear Abby, but what if Kevin Nash were to answer... Uh, the advice of those seeking. I don't know, man. I'm kind of melancholy today, so who knows well, where. Well, we'll see where these go. Right. Um, no, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm not dumb. Dear Sexy, my nephew, I'll call him Neil, is gay. He came out of the closet to his family a few weeks ago on his 20th birthday. You would never suspect that Neil was gay by looking at him or talking to him, but when his brothers were outside playing baseball, Neil would be in the house drawing pictures of flowers. Neil's father said that Neil is gay because all the time his mother was pregnant with him, she kept praying for a little girl. She already had four boys and no girls. Sexy, can praying for a little girl have anything to do with having a gay boy? Can you believe we were here at one point in history, Kevin, in this country? Neil's aunt, that is from. Yeah, well, if, I, if that was the case, then... Um... I wouldn't be in this room alone right now. So, your praying had that much. Oh, that much power. Yeah, I right. would. I, like I said, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be in this because I was pleased, dear God, and that whole time until he didn't take a breath and his heart stopped. So, okay. So, it, it's as silly. It's as silly as we think. I just. I was in awe that there's a time. Where people walked the the planet in this country. Well, it was like when they that said thought that if you prayed for a girl, the kid he, came he, out gay. He didn't. He he didn't appear like he was gay. What is he supposed to do? I mean, what? And did you see the thing he was drawing flowers? Yeah. What's? <laughs> what? is this, uh, the, the, is this was dear Abby gimmick? Do you think was it a work? God damn work. it! Did it again. Um, the. Uh, You went black. Yeah, I know. It's um You're back in Altoona. Yeah. No, where was it? You said Georgia. Where did you live in Georgia? Oh, in the in the, in the hood. The first city. What was the name? Mary we were in Marietta. Marietta. Altoona. That's Pennsylvania, isn't it? Yeah. There you go. You are no, back. Was, I said we lived in the hood. I didn't say we lived in the I mean it was you're a little blurry, though, Kev. Take a look at the, uh, look at the, look at the gimmick. I know. There. I just got to get in. Oh, there you go. You're in. Okay. I got to get into my. Uh, my David Van Bolen, one of our live audience members that you can be a part of when you go to click this doc, uh, click this TV dot com, said blackface isn't okay. Please stop, Kev. All right. Second letter. Obviously, you haven't seen the skit the guy does. Uh, uh, the the comedian. I think the he he is probably Middle Eastern. Uh, but he's, he's, so he's in a, he's in a, he's doing his stand up and he says, uh, he looks, he looks down at this couple and it's big black guy and it's, it's girl. And he says, Hey, blackface, not cool. Right. The guy like looks, I'm like, yeah, there was another big black guy. Hey, sir, blackface, not cool. Right. He does it three different times. Then he says, he gets up, I think, goes back to the mic, and he says, unless you're in the Navy SEALs. He says, then it's cool as fuck to be blackface in a rubber boat, walking, uh, you know, you know, all this, you know, how they show, show those SEALs things, and everybody's, and he says, uh, now, he said, that's completely different. He says, if you and I are on, uh, on the same SEALs team, he goes, you know, he says, if, if I don't have blackface on, he goes, we're going to take a headshot. He says, I, I put out more light than a fucking uh, an iPhone flashlight. He goes, we're dead. He goes, same as I would tell you not to smile. Who is this guy? <laughs> He's, I, I don't know. It's just one of those skits I saw, but it, I just. The stand up? Went, yeah, he's a stand-up, and it was just like, I was just like, okay, where's this? I was just seeing how this guy was going to get out of it. Right. And then it was he was actually, but I I, I don't think it would have worked if it was a white boy. 
Right. I guess the, you said the Middle Eastern, so there was some. Yeah, there was a little. A little silly, though, right? That that it would get away from that you could get away from it if you were born. If your parents were born in Pakistan, he was probably born here. But if you were born in Philadelphia, you can't get away. I think we're I think we're a little bit of a crazy time with with the Steve. Is it Andrew Schultz? Is that who does it? Schultz. I mean, maybe it was Rayleigh. Maybe we'll have to fight. Schultz, that's Rayleigh. actually Schultz, Schultz, I guess, right? Okay, for the search. All right, we'll see. We'll see if it's him. We'll give him props if it is him. Pull, pull I, it up. Pull it up, Steve, and look at it and see see if it's if it's there. See what. See, see how much my brain is, uh, what it pulls in retention-wise. While he does that, I do have another letter for you. There is somebody okay. waiting for your advice. Dear Sexy, for some time now, an adult neighbor I'll call Greta, that's an accessible name, has been meeting her lovers on our street. She lives a couple of blocks over, but she apparently doesn't want her teenagers to see her meeting these men. She and her dates arrive separately. They join each other in one car and don't drive away until some deep kissing and partial disrobing have gone on. I thought Greta was a prostitute until I found out where she lives. It is embarrassing to walk out on our front yard, yard and come upon this scene. I've been tempted to call the police several times, but my wife keeps telling me to mind my own business. She says you can never tell what Greta's story might be, so I haven't called. Recently, I heard that she, div she had divorced her husband and the episode seemed to stop. It hasn't been long, though, and the car hop hopping has started again. Greta may be protecting her own teenagers by meeting her boyfriends on our street, but she sure gives the young children and teens on my block a great show. I am fed up. Even my wife now says to go ahead and do what I want. I think Greta needs help. I'm hoping you'll print my letter so she will recognize herself and stop this before I call the police. Concerned in Oceanside, New York. What would you do? If the guy next to you wasn't laying pavers, he was laying pipe. I mean, the, 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 it seems to me like they're in a very urban area. So, and you got, if you got a little, I mean, to me, it's, it's a no brainer. You got to protect the kids. Well, if, they, if they're just making out, I, I, maybe it's uh, not still. I don't know. They, they, if they're just making out. It doesn't, if somebody was, was kissing in a car, that would not, that would just be that, It'd be kissing. Right. So, I mean, they start, you know, they, they, the hands are moving around, everything else. Then it's groping, and it's, mm -hmm. you know. You ever have this by you since your proximity to the beach? You ever have? No, because you, you can't, you can't, <laughs> you stop in front of my house, you can get rear ended <laughs> 40 miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fucking beach road, man. Bam. Or enough police presence on that little strip. Oh, that's you can't that's even so, stop so, your car. You wouldn't even get telling, a tit in your hand. I was before telling you my fucking wife in your car. I was telling my wife like the last. Um, I say maybe the last two or three months, man. I was just like, it used to be like where I live. Good luck getting like the sheriff there. You know, like anytime we ever had had issues or called in, we'd always say the shores or somebody else would come. We'd never, because we're on, we, we, I, live, I live in the county, like that, that little piece of the peninsula where I'm at is like no man's land. And lately, like I was coming home last night and there was three or four sheriff SUVs in this um, beachside um, parking area. And there's people crying, somebody on their knees, looked like maybe they were cuffed. I, I, I'm not one of those people that are going to gawk. I'll just, I'll look as long as I'm stuck there, but as soon as I can get through it, I'm getting through it because I really don't care. Uh, and I forgot that they had gotten rid of all the red uh, beach patrol pickup trucks. And now the whole, anything that's beach, because the beach is county, is now all uh, patrolled by sheriffs. So the, the the presence now, like on my on my beach, and my around my house is like, and I'm not one of those defund the police motherfuckers <laughs> either. I am all for having a good police force. Of course, you know I'm being safe, and they. You know. Marjorie Taylor Greene wants to defund everything now. The, the, they were very against the defund the police movement. Now they're defunding the FBI and the Department of Justice. 
Go ahead. Continue. But that, and, and we got into that earlier, but then we got I got cut off because we we put the picture of the, the Trump picture up. Ooh. So, but I was just saying that you know like they call this a witch hunt, but what are the chances of Trump getting the same judge that put that special? I mean, what's her name? Like, Eileen um, something. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, it's, it's like it, she's all she already put the kibosh on the Mar-a-Lago uh, raid, right? Like that was already so. She's a Trump appointed judge. Yeah, so overseeing his case, overseeing Ran, random selection. Yeah, and that's and and they're they're sitting there. I'm thinking to myself, like, what's Trump's what's Trump's mo? Always, I mean, it's, it's appeal, appeal, appeal. Well, tied up in court forever. Tied yeah. up, yeah. And then you know, he the only problem he has right now is that it's like there's only so many restaurants in the area, and once you've walked out on every bill <laughs> at every restaurant, it's pretty hard to get get a table. So I think like right now, they you know. Him getting an attorney's not uh, the easiest thing on earth. Not a job I'd want. No. You know the photos did not do much to um, to advertise for Mar-a-Lago. I know the bathroom one I saw had a fucking plastic curtain rod and a yeah and right a plastic white bucket that you might get from Target. This is this is not an advertisement for luxury. No, I. You know it, it, it's the same thing though, man. It's just like. I, I just don't like the like key today. Okay, so he get, he got indicted yesterday. Okay, so today this is this is you know this we we're doing this Wednesday. So he was indicted yesterday, as of uh, when you're hearing this now, which will be he had been indicted a week ago. So he goes back to uh, Dorval or whatever the hell the name of his. Uh, golf courses that he he's he's on right now and does like a a fundraiser slash let me let me like let, let me speak on this and pulls in 2.04 million dollars yesterday it's been it's been like se- i think 7 was the total i saw that he since got? the announcement of the indictment yeah yeah so, you know, it's one of those, and sometimes, you know, I sit there and I say to myself, I'm like, I don't get where these motherfuckers come off on this, this, this whole far left thing. Like there's like, I don't know anybody that's far left. And then all of a sudden you just like, you listen to somebody talking, you're just like, I just hope they get that motherfucker. And I'm thinking. You're as crazy as the guy up the street that's saying, F- got the fuck Brandon sign in his front yard. Yeah. <laughs> like you fucking you. whack. It's like, yeah, Jesus. The two extremes are, are, have met. It's, yeah. They've met on the other side. Come Their on. Their enemies are just different people is the thing. Yeah. But they treat it the same way. Yeah. I just, it's, I, I, I just, I mean, I would be worried if yesterday in Miami it looked like Woodstock. Oh, I don't think with the hundred people that were yeah out of work and that one, showed up, and, and one of one of them just happened to be a guy that wanted to to, to see the lock him up <laughs> while I'm in a, a a really shitty fucking prison outfit. The prison outfit during the motorcade. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, and he just, like, you know, he took his lumps. He just wanted Trump to see lock him up. So. Well, we'll see what happens there. All right. We'll see what happens in, in you know. when, when It's when, entertaining when TV. The news the news is. Uh, but the news is, is it? Entertainment, it's so like, they're gobbling like, it up. Me and, me and my wife, like, last night we, we started watching Beach Renovation. Like, fucking. Like these people, like go. They they used to have it. It was called Bargain Beach Hunters. It was a, a half hour show, 
But now what they do is it's bargain beach hunters and they renovate. So they go out and they bargain beach front a home and then for whatever they, you know, yeah, they say, I feel say like they, you told us about Yeah, this. say yes. they've got like 400 all in and they pick up a, a house for 280 and they got, you know, 120 to use and then they always, you know, the, the, the second they pry a piece of drywall up where they're going to knock a wall down or some shit to make the kitchen bigger, it's termite infested and, you know, on we go. <laughs> You know, you'd be better off watching the Conor McGregor documentary. I told you, about, I told you, I watched that. I, I watched mean, it a you, long you general, time ago. All of our, all of oh, our listeners. It's, that's, I, I thought it was you. If you're not a fan of his, if you if you despise him, watch it and just. And we've yes, we know it was produced by him. Okay, because mm-hmm. guess what? He's 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 smart. Mm-hmm. You know he's smart, so he's gonna get he's gonna get an exact pretty he's gonna he's gonna get he's gonna own his shit. So yeah, we get it, but you can't executive produce the the the, the work, the dedication that it followed as it followed his yes. career and his injuries. Yeah, no, I, no absolutely. He's, he's a he's a he's a special human being, and. There's when he's sitting there and he's got his Versace pajama <laughs> bottoms on on that giant yacht, and they're getting ready to go over to, to Fight Island. And he looks down, and there, I think it's a voiceover where he just basically says that, you know, he's so he's so blessed to have this life, and his his wife is, I believe she's pregnant, but she's playing with the, her, his other two children. Yeah, in the hot tub. And she's outside of the hot tub, and she's kind of monitoring the children. And he looks down, and his crew, all his trainers and everybody else, are boarding this fucking 300-foot yacht. I don't know. I mean, it's a, it's a big-ass boat. Mm-hmm. And it's plush, too. I mean, it's not like – it's nice. And he's just saying that he just you – know, and they're eating and drinking, and it's just – he was just, he just said, it's so nice for me to be able to do this for them, for them to have this lifestyle. And just like, and it wasn't, it, just, it didn't come across phony to me. It came across genuine. Right. And he does seem a, a guy that is genuine, wears his heart on his sleeve. Who knows? I mean, he shows us what he wants us to see. Yeah, but he's also really good at what he does. Well, yeah. But more than that. The, I'm talking about the pro wrestling aspect of it the, that that dude can promo he can i was just gonna can, say he can put asses in seats boxing and mma um are cousins of pro wrestling in that the individual is not a team sport so it's just about the person on camera and you know what? everyone loves the humble athlete that you know works hard but you know what who draws money no everybody likes guys everybody like, likes that guy everybody likes the humble guy but the guys that draw money are they, the they, floyd mayweathers the conor mcgregors the muhammad ali's and the they're, guys they're, that they're, those those guys are the those those guys are the fucking either you like them you either love them or you hate them there's no in between on those guys but that's what i want to see in a contest I don't want to see the two humble. I don't know if I'm paying to see the two hum, humble guys punch each no. other. I loved guys like uh, 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 Hector Camacho, Macho Camacho, and um, especially in that sport. If this, if this, see, to me, it went from Ali. Bravado, it, it's in like, boxing. Ali was the the was the one that because I wasn't I, I didn't grow up with with wrestling. You know, like wrestling wasn't like a staple there was you know a couple of years in my life where I, I would watch wrestling um but after that i i became became basketball and then sports and you'd always watch wide world of sports and you'd always you know with uh you'd always catch some some ali stuff mm-hmm. and it was just like so my first the first fighter that that I remember of of any magnitude was Ali. You know, he right. was 
you know, even though Joe Lewis is, I mean, I was, you know, I don't remember any of, of you know. And he was, I mean, he was still, you know, around Detroit and, mm -hmm. and Sugar Ray Robinson, nothing. But Ali was the first one. And, and then, why did he captivate you? Because he talked shit. Exactly. I used to love that he would always predict. He'd rhyme it, but he'd predict when he was going to knock the bitch out, you know. <laughs> I'll make it quick, and I'll drive him in six. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so Conor McGregor is is that guy today. I mean, it's probably others in MMA. You're fucking. It does help that you can only understand every seventh word too. Oh, I, yeah. I, man, he's just you fucking little weasel. Look at you, you little fucking mm. weasel. I fucking knock the fuck out. Get the fuck away from. Me. You know what I envy too? I don't envy the i don't envy the skill i don't need to snap somebody's neck today he looks great in everything he wears when he wears those suits he's got the body they're fucking i mean probably <coughs> custom which helps. when he when he get when he really diets down he looks crazy because yeah. he's he doesn't train back so he's really like overly developed forward he does. He like he has no external rotation, like everything he because I was thinking that when I was watching, he's got no external rotation. Explain what that means for people like okay, me. Okay, well, I mean, if you take if you like your if you put your hands to your side and mm -hmm. your thumbs go mm -hmm. to towards your so your thumbs are the closest. Your hands are up. Your the back of your hands are are, are facing the same way you are. And then to external rotate them would be to turn your thumbs outward, which makes your scapulas go back, which picks up your chest. I see. So my hand is like this now. Right. And it was like, it started like this. So the external rotation is that movement. Got it. And most people have a really difficult time with external rotation, especially as they get older because they fucking live their life over shit doing like you know keyboard and all that and that's why their necks get fucked doing like, the trump like dance people, people think off. people think that you, you you should once you get a, a, a bad neck you should do this when it's actually this it's, it's tucking your chin in tucking your chin because the natural curve is if you do that that's not your natural it's oh, my neck's so fucked up i don't, I don't even want to move it around on the fucking going into spasm but though, uh, though the stem cells have helped so thank you bio accelerator the stem cells okay. always always some relief i'm still gonna i'm gonna get a uh i'm gonna have a i saw where uh brahm stroman had his his neck fused he had one cervical fused you, and you, you thinking of doing this well i mean I would only do it if they could. Um, what they do is they, they, they have now where they get, it's called disc replacement. It's done, ro everything's done robotically. Mm. And they basically, like, what I need is I need, I don't need so much. I, I, I need something. I need, you know, something in, uh, to, to fill so I get the pressure off my nerves. Mm -hmm. So. And I would I would rather that be a disc replacement. I'd rather be it be, be as minimal as possible, you know, because I think I'm probably I probably got four of not five levels that are fucked. So, right. oh. but uh, to get back to Connor for a second, so so I'm looking at the you know the braggadocious the, the he's a real draw he, he's I mean it helps to be great fighting because you could talk all you want if you're going to get fucking knocked out every fight there's only so much Dana White's going to be able to do with you but the fact that he's good and he's got the mouth and he's entertaining he's charismatic I mean that's the ultimate package and the same in pro wrestling pro wrestlers successful ones are generally charismatic and good with the microphone and all that stuff too so I looked up wrestlers that fought mma and vice versa just to see how successful it was crazy when you shut when you sent me that the list how long it is right let me see where did i send you so there's a list i almost made a comment and i'm glad that i didn't 
because it would look like you've made I enough was... comments on this show. Yeah, in the last couple of weeks, I need any more phone calls. All right, so I sent it to you just now. I can't afford to lose. You might need a co-defendant. I can't. I can't afford to lose one of one of the three friends I have on planet Earth. I think I've been forgiven, but I've I've learned my lesson. So we're not going to go into what we're talking about. We're just going to, if he, you know. We're going to talk about Tank Abbott is what you want to talk about. I I didn't realize that. Like he was like, Abbott was like 10 and 15 as an MMA 10 and 15. Fight. I'm looking at the success rate of some of the names I recognize here. Uh, Tank Abbott, who was one of those entertaining guys. But I think the reason he got over initially in MMA was because he looked like he might be like a wholesale butcher or something. I wouldn't who, want who fucking take, into I wouldn't want to take Abbott fucking drunk no. on drunk drunk throwing bombs at me they're coming after me absolutely not now dan severin this blew my fucking mind kevin look at that record 101 19 and 7 how many fights a year do you have to have to be 101 19 and 7 first of all the record is incredibly impressive you're fighting your ass off that's for damn sure and uh, Dave Batista is one and zero, by the way. I I, I did know that. Uh, so was... on here we go to Chris Catalfo. Yes, I think he's on here. Where's Tim. Chris? Tim, I mean Tim. Chris yeah, was, Chris was his brother. So Tim Catalfo. Um, if I'm not mistaken, four and two. He was so I, I've known T Tim uh, lived in in the same area I did when when Tamara and I met each other. I want to think that Tim went to to college with the Steiners. I want to think Tim Tim's a Michigan guy, but I know he grew up in Syracuse, and it doesn't have anything about where his his uh, his college is. But um, when when Bill when Goldberg was in was in Atlanta. And Bill got involved, he, 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 he got that bug for uh, martial arts, and especially MMA, he opened this place called Obaka. And, you know, and Bill did, for, like, really, he did a really nice job at the gym. You know, there was, and uh, Mark Coleman, who's on this list also, Mark, yeah. Col Mark Coleman was the, the striking coach and... Um, Catelfo was a grappler, was a grappling coach, one of the guys that you know, you could, they had an incredible weight room, every piece of hammer strength you could imagine, which was kind of, you know, back in 97, kind of cutting, cutting edge to, you know, mm. to really have like every piece of, 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 of something, especially that, that hammer strength was, was nice because you could train by yourself. You took the ability where if you couldn't get a rep, you just didn't, you, didn't have to finish it. And you could just drop it. The only problem ever, that I, I had with hammer strength was you were always in the pushing movements. You were always starting at your weakest. You know, like you were starting, in, you know, with your hands. You know, you were starting here and then having to come out of the hole to. Almost so. like a push-up. But it, yeah, I mean, but it, it, if it was a back. bench, you know, it was a normal bench. It would be on standards, and you would be picking the bar up here, then dropping mm -hmm. it, and then you know, taking it down. Right. So that fucking uh, my uh, appendix. My no, my camera is like knees. Oh, I, I, I move and it fucking just. It's 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 looking for focus. It's trying to focus you. Yes. Yeah. It's the I, different lighting you're throwing it off today. I didn't know Bam Bam Bigelow had a had one one I didn't MMA know that. fight. Scott I didn't Bigelow. Know that. Oh and one. Yeah. I heard he fought a six hundred pound tuna. That's just for Sean Waltman. That was uh, okay. I was, <laughs> that was going to make a Bill Parcells that, joke. That but, reference was all, only for <laughs> Sean Waltman. Um. Dos Caras and of course, Jr., and which the, is Alberto Rodriguez. of course, Scott, who's fucking laughing right hard right now. He's listening. 
Das Caras Jr., which is Alberto Rodriguez, was 9-6 and six in MMA. Uh, took, his, uh, took his talents there, which I do now remember. But anyway, so in looking through this list and looking at the Bobby Lashley, 15 and 2, that's right. Um, I watched Bobby Lashley beat uh, Bob Sapp. Remember big ass Bob Sapp? He's yeah. On, he, was, he was on Longest Yard with me. Sapp's a big old fucker, but. Sapp did a lot of. Sapp um, made some fucking money over there. Pride and all that other shit. Mm hmm. I remember one time I watched one of those pride things and they had <clears throat> like a Russian kickboxer and that then a big tall black kickboxer like a Baku and then Sap and they had like a three way and Sap got cut maybe and they but he was pounding the fuck out of the Russian, but Sap got cut. And they stopped the, the the fight and gave it to the Russian dude. And then something happened. I think the Obaka guy got cut, or or he cut the other guy. It was like it was like a three way round robin that everybody like put everybody over, but nobody did a clean finish. Mm. And it was like, and everybody kind of just was, it, like played through that and just moved to the next thing, and nobody got hurt. And I went, "Oh, so that that's a fucking work." Mm -hmm. You know, like I just watched it. I'm just like, "Wow, that was," you know, somebody getting you, you get there's a there's a you can tell a, in a, a work in a shoot when you get somebody in trouble. When you get somebody in trouble and it's a shoot, like it's very hard for the the, the championship tested guy not to fucking put on the afterburners and, and go for the kill. Go in, right? Yeah. You know, it's just it's difficult. And the training for for this for uh... see that was the thing I, I dug about the the Conor McGregor thing was like. You don't see that stuff very often. I was I was very interested in how you trained for MMA. First of all, what he does with his body. You see what he was doing those those like stretch rolls. I don't know what the fuck they're called. Yeah. He, he was down on the mat and just how he was. I saw jujitsu contorting his body and stuff as a as a stretch, but yeah. it was also strengthening the muscles and, and and getting ready to roll. Exactly right to be down on the mat. You know, but. Anybody that's ever done any kind of, okay, pro wrestling takes a, a completely different, like, I never in the game of basketball got blown up like I did in wrestling, where you're just like, whole, like when you get out of a match and it's like the bottom of your lungs, you feel like a, a fish out of water, mm -hmm. like the bottom of your lungs ache because you've just because you've got to just you got to keep grinding like you, you can't like there's no timeouts there's i mean you, you when you, when you get older and you're in, and you're in the business but when it's time to go home and if you got a four minute finish you're fucking and you're hoofing through that finish you got a four minute finish and hey, that guy's counting on you to be there mm. so uh i can't even imagine with with you know, and anybody that, that wrestled at, at any time in high school, even if it was in gym class, I mean, fucking 90 seconds on a mat trying to get the other guy's shoulders on it. Ooh. And you, you you add into that the ability for knees, submissions, and, and oh. fists, and, like, they say there's nothing, I mean, remotely nothing, that's uh comparable to, to mma yeah oh i bet yeah. no, there's just there's just no way i mean the conditioning is on un is unbelievable just the the amount of conditioning you would do to make sure that you didn't get fucking hit and as you're going down have some fucking because they're all strong they're all fucking, there's not a whole lot like you rarely see a, an mma fight with a dude that's got a derby. Now, you'll see pro boxers, man. They'll be fat as fuck. You know? Some of the heavyweights, they'll be fat as fuck. 
you know, like you you don't see a lot of a, a spare change on a fucking MMA guy. No, it's true. Like it's they're true. they're so whatever they are, and I don't know how the fuck. I think Brock got down to I think two sixty two is the heaviest you can be. I don't know what it is, but um, you know that Brock was fucking two ninety. You know, by the time he got to the the the, the, the ring that night, but just to get hit and knocked down and have somebody like that with a with not a boxing glove but a 6 ounce glove that isn't really padded here and he's hammer fucking he's just giving me hammer fists while on I'm down on the ground neck, yeah <clears throat> you know it takes a it takes a special kind of conditioning yeah dom just said two, two, two oh, 206 to 265 is the heavyweights was a little bit of a difference in that, isn't there? Yeah, that's a pretty broad. Yeah, because you know, going more than two sixty five, this becomes a conditioning issue now, like you're saying. So, but what if? I mean, to me, I, I don't think that there should be a top end, or they should have a super heavyweight or a super heavyweight, right? Like you, yeah. You know, if I think Brock would have, if Brock could have weighed two ninety. And not cut down. Yeah, why the hell not, right? You know, who, who all the, then then all of a sudden it's just like who above two sixty five is going to go out there and beat Brock? Yeah, because now everybody's they might be losing eight pounds to get to two sixty five. They're not losing twenty eight pounds like he is to get down to two two sixty five. Yeah. So. The heavyweights are always a draw anyway. The bigger the fucking guy, the better. It's like bodybuilding. Go out there, four hundred fucking pounds. Throw up on his opponent. I remember the first time I went to a bodybuilding show, and I was I was I was getting into the bodybuilding lifestyle, and you know, started training and fucking watching, like really watching what you eat is the huge thing, and the and then the amount that you have to eat. You got to mm. figure, you know, like it doesn't matter whether you're hungry or not. You need to get fifty grams of protein in because it's been two hours. And you can't like, do oh. the French bakery for the uh, no, and, 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 and you know that all the guys that compete will say, and don't drink a fucking shake. Your body needs food. You're like, fuck. Can't you? No, no you got to eat, man. It's, that's that's the key to fucking staying lean is eating. Because Tamara left, and I, I bought a bunch of uh, pre pre done bodybuilding meals. They were like 50 grams of protein, 40 grams of carbs, seven, eight grams of fat. And you put them, you know, take them out of the freezer, put them on the counter, let them sit during the day, and, and just throw them in the microwave for like two minutes. And it was like, and all of a sudden it was just like I started eating, and it was like, oh, God, man. And when I ate like, a, like oatmeal and egg, egg whites for breakfast. And I was I was still putting in two shakes, mm. and all of a sudden it was like my I, I I weighed myself, and of course the more you eat the more you're gonna defecate. So the, the I I weighed myself and I'm thinking like man I bet you I put on like five or six pounds the amount of you know amount of calorie intake that I've I've picked up. I was four pounds lighter. I was just like my my body composition. I was my metabolism was I was burning fat. Like I, it was like every. I mean, I'm just like, oh fuck. Like okay, now now you know this. So were and now you, it's. Were you supplementing with any of the get blitzed lit aid by any chance? Um, I I could actually uh, say that I. Uh, now I have a, a six pack of Diet Sprite in the in the kitchen in my refrigerator, <laughs> and I had a a little um, kind of like a vodka tonic today uh, before I came down with a little of uh, our uh, guy Mickey Ray Sinatra's Get Blitzed Lit Aid. I bet. Yes, that's and the right. thing is is is. I was doing the cannabis, which I still, I mean, I'm, I'm a huge, I love mm -hmm. the, I love the, the sublingual cannabis. It's just, but I always, because there we go, get blitzed. Thank you. Thank you. I will. 
Um, As if you needed permission. But I'm not. I'm not blitzed. No. I, get, I, I think that I might. I have to be because I keep like going in and out of focus. Maybe I'm not in real life. I think your camera had a little bit of get blitzed earlier. Uh, I think the fact that my thumb, my, some of the my, sip thumb and syrup on my it. thumb might have hit it. You know, I might have you know, got enough of a contact like fentanyl. But uh, no, uh, yeah. So I had a, I, I, and this is. It's very quick, so you know where you're at. Absolutely. There's no error by going, I don't feel anything. Let me have another yeah, you, gummy. You you, yeah, you don't do the fucking top. Yeah, you don't do this and then go, oh, shit, I should have never left the house. Exactly. This is like, and it's like anything else, man. Just be smart, you know. You, you start with it. With, 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 with I think the dose is a, is a tablespoon. Yeah, you could even probably do a teaspoon. You could do as little as a teaspoon. Uh, this is the Delta 9 sipping syrup I'm talking about here, and it's potent stuff. It's like THC but on steroids, okay? It's a syrup. You mix it in any beverage, like a tea or, as Kevin said, a white soda, uh, they feel is best, um, with as little as a teaspoon, okay? It's a fast onset, 5 to 15 minutes, nano-infused means it goes right to your bloodstream, okay? It bypasses the breakdown uh, in the liver, so it works like alcohol. Um, and it's a tolerance killer. This is not gas station Delta 8 bullshit, folks. This is the real deal. THC Delta 9, the THC that you get from marijuana. If you're in Maryland, you can uh, you can visit a stay-lit smoke shop. Um, but for the rest of us outside the state, it's legal to ship from the Get Blitzed website to all 50 states without a med card as long as you're over 21. All right? And right now, because of this podcast, here's an advertiser that appreciates us. Boom. You can save $15 by entering the nice. code CLICK, K-L-I-Q, at checkout. Go get, um, go to their website at get-blitzed.com. That's you get- said $15. This is 15% Did off. I say $15? It's 15%. Yeah, 15%. Um, absolutely, 15%. Um, so go there. Go to get-blitzed, get-blitzed.com. Use that promo code K-L-I-Q. And uh, get rolling, guys. Join Kev, and get. Well, you can you can see that I'm I'm blitz because I'm sitting here reading this this ad as you're talking. I'm reading like the back of a fucking cigarette <laughs> cereal box <laughs> when I was a kid. <laughs> show show me the bright colors. Go on their website. Check it out now. Check out the excellent flavors they have. And uh, remember, guys, you control your own dosage here. Drop a tiny bit in your soda. See where you go. From there, get blitzcom Thank you, get blitzed. Tablespoon seems to be it. Uh, That's the magic for you. Tablespoon in the can. Of, I, was just, I, I did kind of like that. You know, when you get the kind of nice pour at the bar, where they kind of pour the shot and then kind of let the little. I kind of did one of those. Maybe, maybe might have been a tablespoon and a half or two. Thank you, get blitzed. All right, back with click this the Kevin Nash podcast. Um, and it's time for hashtag ask Nash. You want to do this? You can do it by hashtag ask Nash on Twitter. Uh, we will grab your questions like Instagram. A wrestling historian has done when he's asking, how would you have ended the NWO storyline? Thanks in advance. I always thought that the best way that that, that could have been handled was it was never, it was never done how I always envisioned it. I always envisioned that once we took over, that it would become NWO Nitro. It was no longer going to be WCW. It'd be NWO, and everybody would basically work. You know, you ever see, there was a show that uh, it was on television for a while, and it was basically if Germany had won World War II. And it oh, was the man in the high castle or yeah. something like that? Yeah. And so a similar thing if uh if yeah, so like, had taken yeah, so over like the you know, I wouldn't have had I wouldn't have I wouldn't have went wolf pack. Like we, we should have we fucked that up because we were a bunch of all a bunch of prima donnas. We should have just s- sat down 
Of course, this is a 64-year-old Kevin Nash saying this. Right, sure. You know, if, if, we, if, we knew, if we knew what we knew then, right? Knew now what we knew then. Oh, opposite. Knew, knew then what we if knew now. If you knew then what you know now. Yeah, that's how it goes. <laughs> only took me seven, seven <laughs> times to, to try something that could only went two ways. <laughs> have 50, a 50 shot you turned into a 50 have another 50, 50. fucking have another tablespoon of syrup fucking there sparky <laughs> x slice x says being left-handed is it any different in training to I be didn't, a wrestler i didn't i didn't finish Oh, I thought I thought that no. I thought that was it that they would have the the show. Go ahead, finish. No, they would. We would take Today. we would take over, and then slowly, the WCW like Sting and Dallas and those guys would be like the Revolutionary War, and slowly they would try to take, you know, back over the Turner the t- Turner product. You so know. I have to ask you, when would you have cut it off? Then it would never have made its way to WWE. It would have ended in WCW before the purchase in 2001. Yeah. Okay. It would have been back to WCW, and then everybody would be. Then we could have, hopefully, by, you know, in a perfect world, we could have had the Larry Sanders show. We could have shot that different, like, like created worlds, done everything the way that I, you know, that I just the way I envisioned. But, you know, I, I didn't. It was just I, I was one person with a vision, you know. Yeah. It wasn't like I was Bob Ross. I didn't get to fucking make little trees and houses and shit. I just pretty much had to do what everybody else wanted to do. First time I've ever heard the analogy of Bob Ross brought into the booking committee in WCW. <laughs> Bob Mold, maybe, <laughs> not Bob Ross. Oh yeah, you know, Bob Ross well fucking pretty much uh, had a free canvas. But uh, right, let's take Slice's question here. Is being left-handed any different in the training of wrestling? That's a good question. Yes, because you're, when you, I boxed, you know. So when I boxed, my left hand stayed here, and this was my jab hand. Mm-hmm. So now you're asking me to basically take take my jab. I mean, it's just I'm, I'm switching it around, so... Because you're working one side, right? Yeah, you only work the you only work the right the right everything is on the right. And you know, it's so funny. Like ninety percent of us have um, bad shoulders, you know, and a lot of it's from lifting. Of course, a lot of it's from landing on it, but a lot of it is it's all our right shoulders from like every night fucking locking up and somebody taking your fucking arm. Mm. And you don't, you know, I don't give a fuck how many, you know, it's it's a work and you're, but it's like anything else. It's just that, you know, you, they bend the fucking arm behind you and they fucking take their fucking elbow and they fucking slam it and they, and it's, you know, but it's all flat, you're, it, but there's still, it's, it's that, you know, you take two 300 pound guys and put them in a car and have them just tap each other like that going across the country by the time they get to Los Angeles from fucking Florida, both of their <laughs> fucking shoulders will be disintegrated. <laughs> you know, so I, I just think that, you know Yeah, so that and then So there was a difficulty in being left handed and, and working the right side of your opponent. Because if you didn't say okay, uh bang bang bang, uh you're down uh, I'm coming off the top. Watch the clothesline. Okay. Well, now I'm. I'm. So I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. F- I'm gonna feel him like I, in in the, in the on the canvas. I'm gonna feel him. And then all of a sudden, I'm gonna. He's gonna be gone because I'm not gonna feel any pressure on the can. I'm not gonna feel movement on the canvas, which means he's on the ropes. So then it's always the best thing you can do, and I learned this from Scott, is don't turn direct. Always take a step this way as you then start your turn because now you're walking into, and if he's, if he's waiting for you to, as, he, as you go to turn, he should start becoming, 
that way there, instead of you waiting, standing and waiting for it to come, now you're just, it's in, it's in the air and you get to go, oh, fuck, like he's coming. But if that guy, if he, if you say, you know, watch the clothesline, you're expecting this, and if that guy comes with the left, you're already, you're, I'm feeding you this way. Mm -hmm. I'm coming so that that's going to be, that, I'm coming to this. Right. You, you've so, both got to be moving yeah, in, in, toward the same point of contact. It, absolutely. So you take that, you know, take that out of the equation, and it's a fucking clusterfuck. Yeah. It looks like shit, but also injuries as and well. And not only that, to me, it's just like, who the fuck trained you? Well, I would hope that anybody with training would, would have that shit covered. I, 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 they shouldn't be. Didn't always happen. They shouldn't be. In the, yeah, and they, there was a lot of guys that, that, that you mm. know, that didn't work. I mean, they were left-hand predominant, but, I mean, they. I, I can't say that there was a lot because most, most of them didn't make it. Right, right, right. But you've encountered them is what you're saying. Yeah. How about our live audience? Uh, part of the benefits of being here in person is, being able to be part of the show. We always want to hear from our friends here, other than just little comments throughout. David Van Boglen, Kevin, what's in the drink you have there? That has colostrum. Um, it has, uh, what's it called? Is it called Super Gut? It's a, it's a I fiber. Know. I think it's called Super Gut. It's a green packaged fiber. It has two packages of that in there. It had it had three packages of the colostrum. It's a eighty eight point eight alkaline water, so it, it helps with the acidity, which in turn all these other things. It's got it's got a another homeopathic uh, anti inflammatory uh, cocktail in there that that. That brings you, and then there's also. What's the purpose of, of of all that shit right there? Is this like recovery between workouts? I, well, it just like colostrum is is what you know. You're, you're that was the the first like few days of breast milk that the mother right. gives is packed with colostrum. So this is it's you know it's it's basically a, a superfood. Um, I just notice my gut health is just my, and my skin and my hair okay. you know it's just i just think it's 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 there's so many we we age like everything is aging you know so so rapidly and once you you know once once the oxidation hits the levels that we have you know anything you can do to to you know to slow that down i look at my skin and i say i mean i've never had any work done i've never had botox i've never had fillers and i don't have like 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 i'm not deeply lined i mean i i, I never really smoked mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know i did bong hits but i was more of a bong hit yeah, i was more of a bong hit guy than i was a uh I, I, I was a, I liked honey blunts there for a couple of, but it just I was always I I like to get stoned at my house and then go. But when I was in Arizona, it was like a twenty five minute drive to the gym I worked out at, and I'd always roll a joint, and I'd smoke half on the way there, and then half on the way home. You dip it in some colostrum, see what happens if you if you, if you smoke it. Maybe. Yeah. Faster delivery. I, the, I can't even believe. Like, I, I couldn't even. I don't know if I could. If I could, maybe because the weed's so strong now. Like I don't know if I could get stoned and I could train arms. I could probably train back. I know I wouldn't want to train legs stoned. Maybe right. if I trained chest stoned, I wouldn't go heavy and I wouldn't fuck my shoulders up. Though I have done. I've listened. You know, since I've got these. These stem cells, I mean, it's just like I'm not going to fuck them up just to, mm -hmm. for the hell of it. Another question from the audience. Who else uh, Who else is here with some love? Some love for Kev. David, again, I'm not a wine guy, 
My doc said a small amount of red wine is great for lowering my bad cholesterol. Can you suggest a good red that's not insanely pricey? Um, okay, number for, one, for medical he's, reasons. he's saying a small amount of red wine. So that means probably four ounces. Okay. So the best thing you can do is there's a screw top wine called Cadundrum. 20 bucks a bottle. Mm hmm. But the thing is, it's a screw top, so uh, right. If, if, It'll if, last you've you. You've got to find. You've got to find a tasty. I mean, this has got a, it's a, a very nice taste, and it's. I, I believe it's 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 part of the Camus Winery. Like oh, they're, I'm they're a fan bottom, of Camus. Like they're bottom. Yeah. Like they're, yeah, I think it's like they're one of their bottom of the line. But I think there's that there's somehow some lineage uh, with with Camus with that wine. And that is something that's like the syrup. We have that in our, we always have a bottle of, because, you know, you can put it in the fridge. Right. In the summertime, man, like, I, I, I rarely drink beer. I was drinking beer there for, like, I, I did, um, I went up to, 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 the, uh, to the store about a week ago. My wife asked me to grab something. It was, um. Like I said, I'd never go into 7 Eleven. I've always had this dream of being shot in the head mm. at the front at the front desk of a 7 Eleven, you know, when there's a, a hold up and a guy, a guy sees me and goes, I'm not going to take a chance. Bang. Or, so, or when you're riding with Bam Bam and he wants to cut in line. Yeah. Holy. No, he didn't cut in line. He just fucking run his, run his, being, run his mouth. Being, yeah, being a racist. As they would say, not reading the, the doc did say. Uh, oh, David's saying he said four to six ounces of the red wine would be. Yeah, four to six ounces. As I said, four ounces. So, yeah. so I mean, go, always go for it. I mean, you're going to get, you get four glasses out of a, if you go six ounces, you're going to get four, four glasses, almost five. 27 ounces in a bottle of wine. More trivia for everyone. Kevin, what more can we cover? We MMA, twenty-seven ounces in a bottle. We've covered it all. Yet another another successful week, and uh, good seeing you. And we 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 and got hearing to, you the whole episode. Thank you. And we got well. to talk. We got to say happy birthday to T. I'm glad we did. Yeah. So, huh? I should remind everyone that. Uh, Tristan Nash is one of the creators of this show, which is a production of Butch and Sundance Media, produced in association with Talk Podcast Heat. Producer Steve Kaufman, graphics Dominic D'Angelo, title sequence and audio edit by Wesley Burleson. <clears throat> Theme song by Dale Oliver, technical research by Tristan Nash, copyright 2023, Butch and Sundance Media. Kev, what do you say about doing another one? Yeah, because I, I think that... Um... The, what the world needs now is just a little bit more explicit language.